Welcome back, everybody, to the Gears Esports Spring Major Fallout here. Joined with Franchise on the desk alongside Ash. And, hey, we've had quite the discussion, quite the dynamic so far. And uh, Twitter's blowing up right now. I'm fighting an army of 3,000 people. So wish me luck in that one. But Kansas City Pioneers makes me look like a complete idiot and loses to EU United in the winner's bracket finals. EU looking great. KCP a little bit down in the dumps right now. So first things first, Fran, I want to get your take. This KCP squad now in a position they have not been in since a midseason split uh, invitational tournament. Down and loser's bracket having a fight for a comeback, which they've done before, but not in a major. I mean, what's it like being in this position? Do you think this team has what it takes to, to bounce back? I mean, I do just because um, they've done it before. They've done it before. They've won other championships. I mean, these guys, they're, they're built for the moment. Um, but this time around, I don't know. I, I, I don't know about the makeup of this team because they haven't really faced this challenge with Brawny. They did that with uh, Precision. So yep. I, I still think they, you know, they can do it. Will they do it? I'm not too confident in, um, but I guess we'll see uh, shortly. Yeah, I, I mentioned it a bit earlier. Big shoes to fill in replacing Precision. Arguably on track to be kind of the next Billy, the next mental. A lot of comparisons made between the two of them, their play styles, their impact on the game. He decides to, to move on over to Halo. Bronny fills his shoes. They still win a championship, but you, you can tell this roster is a little bit different without Precision on it. So, Francis, I got to agree with you there. Uh, Ash, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Your Optic squad, been there before. Mexico City against Franchise, actually, where you guys came back. Probably most historic event. I, I got to say, probably your favorite event if I had to pick on your behalf. But, uh, what's it like being in this position? Do you think this KCP has the same kind of DNA and makeup? You know, I, I think it, this is going to be where we see the true test of a championship caliber team. We know they're a championship caliber team, like I was saying before, when everything's going right. This is our, ta- our chance to see when things aren't going right. We get to see them tested. We get to see them get punched in the face and then see how they punch back. So, you know, KCP, they have really talented players. Bronny, like you said, big shoes to fill, but he's stepped up. He's being that guy that they need. It's just a matter of they didn't look like the it's the, the same KCP that we saw yesterday, today. So we need that KCP showing up today, and they need it now because Rise is ready to go. Rise is looking fierce. Rise 3 0'd PK. I mean, didn't even look close. So, you know, KCP really needs to get their stuff together and, and show that championship mentality that they they believe they have we've been we've been putting so much respect on this team's name rightfully so calling them the next dynasty they've won five straight but now is their big test they haven't been tested like this ever in as a roster especially with Bronny on it and uh, i think it's truly true character is defined in times of adversity and this is the time where they have to fight that adversity if we could do rosters real quick kind of walk through these teams i want to make sure anyone that's watching that's maybe new not familiar with modern day gears esports watch back in the day get ready for and buckle up for a hell of a, a hell of a show let's take a look at the kansas city pioneers the modern dynasty back to back to back to back to back champions in gears five it's handles who competed way back in gears four at the kind of amateur semi-pro level but never really kind of broke out as a, as a top player until gears five a sells game back Battles online player in Gears 4, recent, arguably best player in Gears 5, been playing out of his mind. Zysho, who also kind of competed back then, but really took till Gears 5 till he took off. And Bronny, the young gun, the rookie on the come up this season, breakout player of Gears 5, arguably joining this roster. It's a team of modern day gunners, and they've been looking great in the last five events. But on the flip side, they're playing against a Rise squad that might be familiar for those who've been watching for a while. Minus the guy on the far right, it's Inzem. A breakout player early on in Gears 5 has really, really burst onto the scene as a top player. Detox playing so solid as of late, really, really elevating his game the last year, year and a half. A Vexy's movement god and Rushies. He's been here, been there, been, been there, done that. Reciprocity champion, ghost gaming champion. He's looking to hoist another trophy. This Rise squad came out swinging today, guys in uh, that opening matchup against the Pittsburgh Knights. They're looking hot. Kansas City Pioneers, the former dynasty and greats. I mean, it's a toss-up as to who's going to win, that's for sure. I'm just excited to kind of jump into the map picks and bands and start the discussion, Fran. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I mean... I'm really excited to see what Rise is going to do, um, how how they're going. Oh, we already have them in front of us. So Love it. We, we have uh, Pioneers banning Reactor. Um, we have Rise banning Spire. I, I believe Spire is an auto ban for Rise, so that's not surprising to see. We have a Fear being banned, and then we have a ban coming. Oh, a Canals ban from Pioneers. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And then Escalation ban. So, I mean, nothing really surprising here except that maybe the, the Fira, but um, just because I know in the past Pioneers had an auto ban on that map. Um, but I guess we'll see uh, the picks here in just a second. Let's try to take a look at the picks. Ash, walk us through it. 
Yeah, of course, uh, Ritual Control, we're starting that off. Now we just saw KCP get demolished by United on that map. So I'm curious to see, uh, I, you know, maybe they thought it was a fluke. Maybe they think that it's, you know, Rise's weak map. And so I'm hoping they're brushing that off and they're looking towards what's right in front of them. We're going after that to Tomb Execution, which we saw Rise just doing you know, phenomenal gameplay. That's where we saw the Avexi's Torque Bow shot that was just incredible against PK. So Rise is feeling confident on that map. Good pick from them. Back to Vascar Escalation. I'll keep saying it every time it's picked. This is a, a, a veteran map. These guys have been playing it for years. So it, I, I expect this one to be kind of a coin toss. As long as KCP can, you know, get their head back on their shoulders and not think too much into that E United match that they just played. Uh, then we're going to Rise District control so this district control rise has lost this map like i said to f1 earlier on friday but i think they're still confident on this map and they just saw a weakness a hole in kcp's game exposed by united and if we need it game five clock tower execution kcp looked pretty flawless on that map against united but rise is a different beast rise has better teamwork and i think that's going to be a much more even execution if we get there and there you have it, the map picks and bans and breakdown and analysis from Ash. And it's going to be interesting in terms of how things shook out with the maps and picks. But let's talk a little bit about the keys to victory. These are the Fran's keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Kansas City Pioneers. Fran, walk me through what they need to do right now, kind of in the dumps after coming off a loss against United. Um, I mean, to start off, just don't overthink. I mean, you guys have been champions before. You, you're the defending champions. Well said. Um, you know, the, the match is already over. The, the, the pass is in the past. You can only focus on rise now. Um, and honestly, the my biggest main point is, is menace mode. We, we need handles to really, you know, come out and be be the menace that we call them. Uh, we need the MVPs, you know, Cells and Zysho to play like MVPs. We, and we need Bronny to, honestly, Bronny's had a great event so far. Bronny's been playing great, but he's gonna need to step it up to another level. Um, at this point, uh, Rise is looking good, but, but like I said, you, to you to be a, a champion and to defend that crown, I mean, it's it's not easy. And and in this type of moment, you you want to you want to set yourself apart. You want to set yourself up to be the best dynasty. You know, going back to that conversation. Um, but um, can they do it? I, I'm not I'm not so sure. On the flip side, we got Rise. Ash, talk talk to me. Oh, I'm surprised it doesn't say rise up to the occasion. <laughs> um, so we got to kick them while they're down. We cannot give KCP the room to regain the room to get their confidence back. You got to keep this momentum that you guys have coming from that loser's bracket match against PK and keep forcing them down into these depths of of losing hell when you lose that match in the winner's finals in such a disappointing way. So keep that momentum and kick them while they're down. On top of that, execute your game plan. Rise is one of those teams where if they can get things going according to plan with them and according to their gameplay, according to Affinity's masterclass of, uh, of strats, then you know you're gonna be able to execute, you know you're gonna be able to perform well. It's just a matter of if things go wrong, can they stay on plan or are they just gonna start reacting and crumble? That's a good, that's a great point. And yet it, it's honestly such a toss up. We're going to be talking through predictions here in a second. And it is a hard one to pick. If Rise plays like they played against the Pittsburgh Knights coming out swinging, they were playing out of their minds a level above. I think they got, they got it under control here. If, if KCP can come out and like Fran, I think your keys to success respond. Don't overthink and get back into menace mode, get back into absolute savage New York, you know, uh, handles Shawnee menace mode. I, I think they're going to come out and I think they could easily take it against rise, but it's tough to say. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Let's jump right into predictions. Fran, kick us off here. Who do you think is going to take it? I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to take rise. Uh, just the way that they played PK, that's the rise that that can win a championship. The guys that are aggressive, they don't hesitate. They they go for the neck right away. And they look like they're they're working together while doing it. I mean, that's a scary rise. Um, and that's, that's the reason they're my pick. Damn. Rise over KCP, reigning champs. Dynasty coming to an end is what Fran says right here, right now. And the Rise boys, his former teammates, are going to be the ones to do it. Rash, how about you? Who you got? I'm going to have to agree with Fran. I think Rise takes this one. I think KCP is softened up. They're weakened. E United beat them up. And now you're just coming in and you're finishing them off. So Rise, if you're playing the way you played against PK, this is a free win for you. And I'll see you in the grand finals. Damn. All right. Both y'all saying this is it for the Kansas City Pioneers. And look, my brain, if I was thinking with my brain and only my brain, I'd agree with y'all. I think Rise looked much better today, came out swinging and seems like the better roster this Sunday. 
but I'm going to go with my heart here a little bit. I like a good story. I like a little drama. Finally, Gears is being talked about you know, quite a bit in the mainstream on Twitter. We're going to keep it rolling, baby. The Kansas City Pioneers are going to prove here that they have what it takes. They have that same DNA that that former Optic Dynasty had, and they can bounce back from the loser's bracket to win a championship. If they don't, well, there goes the reputation. There goes that coveted dynasty that we keep talking about. And I think it's uh, done and dusted that they're not even in contention for that top, top spot here. So we'll see what will happen. And I am beyond excited for this one. Colin wants to come and join the discussion. So let's go ahead and bring Colin in. Colin, what are your thoughts, my man? I mean, my main thought is how the hell did Jose look so good on a Sunday? I'm sitting here sweating <laughs> like a sinner in the front row. I think, thought good. number one. Great. That's what he wanted the five box for? That's it? Yeah, oh yeah. I needed a five box to hype my man up. I had to gas him up just one time. I said, ain't nobody else going to do it. I got to do it. I said one thing about <laughs> Twitter go. blowing up on um, Fallout. I think that's just an unfair discussion, Fallout, just because it's two different teams playing in two different areas, two different versions of the game. Because then yeah, it is. at one point or another, if you're going to make that argument, why not just throw Infinity in the mix from Gears 1? Insane from Gears <laughs> that's 2. That's a good point. And just have like you an invite-only event with the top eight teams from the history of Gears. I'm down for it. That's a great point. You know, I'm, Man, you'll, you'll you know there, the though. truth is, though, Fury. Y'all don't know Fury, the real Fury, but franchise affinity, Fallout, and Knock will be any team in this entire conversation, oh, Fred. Oh, we were oh, godlike, bro. We were oh, godlike, you know, back in Gears 3, knock. MLG didn't pick up the game. But no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, last time they the did a throwback team, I <laughs> vaguely remember Optic dismantling them in yeah. front of people for the uh, Gears. You can't throw it. You can't throw Infinity oh, in the mix. You can't throw them in the that mix. Was, that was disrespectful to our NV team. We were not there. That was just absolutely yeah. disrespectful. Yeah, it was. And to the point where I think they were saying you guys are going to let them win a couple rounds, if I, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under so, NDA. I can't. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> well, with that said, maybe Infinity's out of the conversation, but the KCP, I like that point, though, Jacob. The KCP versus Optic conversation is obviously difficult to say. My point, which is to clarify, was in Gears 5, right now, if with practice and if you know 100%. Billy and the boys are to come back for this final major i think kcp gives them a run for the money and there's an argument to be made there which is the point not that they're the better i, I, I I'll, mean, I'll go and no way you can argue that i'll write on your coattails and say i agree 110 percent. right now there's just not enough time and these guys are too good they wolf pack too strong and it doesn't matter how many shots the optic boys can hit these guys just have it in their blood with the way the game is played right now Ashes, you're going to need a finally, whole dissertation to I'm counter that. I'm talking about right you? now. Ashes can't argue that. I'm talk, we're talking about right now. They can't come back with the time that's left for the next major. Debate. Thank you, Jacob. Finally, I get one more person that <laughs> realizes there's some sense in the logic in the discussion. But no, it's good discussion. we got to jump into this match, guys. It's going to be a hell of a match. Great conversations, as always. Hypotheticals. The only way we know is if Billy and the boys come back. Ash, you're the only one that can make it happen for the final major. we got one more Gears event, and the chapter is closed, brother. I'm counting on you to bring them back for this major in the summer. Can you do it? Uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Shopify Rebellion enters Gears of War. Yeah. Enters oh, Gears of War. And plays both titles. Yeah. Complexity can make it happen too. All right, guys, let's get this conversation deep, started. Over to the casters. KCP live against Rise. We'll see if they can do it. We'll see what they're made of. Take it away, guys. What's up over here on the caster side of things, Jacob? We have got a good one on the docket, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit up here. I'm going to be the judge during the execution. You know, I got my robe on. I got my gavel. I got you over there. You my bailiff. If somebody start talking crazy, you got to take them out of here. You got to get them out of here as my bailiff. Point, point me in the direction, Your Honor. I'll take them out. I'll take them to the back. I'll give them a little rough love in there and show them who is the best. And I like the way you talk, Colin, because I think you kind of watch Gears Esports more than anybody else out there. You got to feel you break it down more than anybody. And what is your little breakdown with the little time that we got left? Pioneers coming off a loss, Rise coming off a victory. Who do you got? I like what I see from the Pioneers. They went from a completely losing map cycle. They look, they basically gave all five maps home field advantage over to the E United boys. Here against Rise, they said, nah, let's let's correct that. Let's take away some of their favorite play toys. Let's take away that home field advantage. That's what I like to see. They're starting to figure it out. They're going to wake up right here. We should have a hell of a matchup on our hands. Mm -hmm. I just hope we get the same rise from match one this morning. Yeah, I do agree with that as well. But both of these teams, all the competitors need to also have that seed in the back of their mind that they cannot get gassed out in this match. They cannot let the frustrations reach an all time high because after the dust settles, no matter if this is only three maps or five, they got E United waiting in the grand finals, hungry to get that championship away. And the Pioneers, they've been looking so good all weekend long, except for that winner's finals match. So they're looking to come out of this one with a chip on their shoulder. 
Let's see what we can do here with the first map, ladies and gentlemen, between the Pioneers and Rise. I know that chat is about to blow up with a ton of hype for both of these squads. There is a lot. There's a lot of fans arised out there, and there's a ton of fans of the Pioneers, and it's it's almost good. This is almost like a classic WWE matchup. <laughs> Rise are the faces, baby. They come out here, they're the face. You got the Pioneers, they're the heels, baby. They're, they're fighting for a chance to go to WrestleMania to fight off against E United right now. Let's see who can take the victory. of sells, though. He's gonna start one off with a steamroll over Rushy's 3v3 here at the hill. Now, after that first kill, Enzem gets a big body shot onto Acells. Acells has to roll back, look for some help. 3v2 onto the back side of these pillars. Inzem's gonna get that down, goes for the finish, but the back A's are through and true. Pioneers start off with a big team fight win. Yeah, they got that first elimination, Colin. Just slowly but surely, they used their numbers to perfection. You saw it as well as I did. Instead of pushing forward, they backtracked. They made sure to trap Rise and force them into a mistake, which they did, and now off a of respawn. I think Rushy's gonna be the guy we're looking at here to lead the charge. He has the frag grenades, but it's not him as a solo. Players are gonna get damaged up. Players are gonna get marked out, and those are gonna be his targets. We get into this next area here. Zeiss show with a pick with that torque bow on the headshot. Now you see everybody clamored into the hill going for the neutralization. You see what Zeiss show's doing. He's trying to bait out the shot over the top. Maybe go for a chance to get that first kill on, but will not be able to get it. Now we'll see handles start to rotate off as that hill will be able to close out. And P2 will spawn up here momentarily. Look at Rise sneaking out into the open, sneaking out into the respawn areas. Aisha will be holding down the first point of contestation. Inzem jumps right into the waiting and loving arms of Handles. Big kill coming through, and now the up is there. Does he get the chance for the revive? Does he get a chance for third? No, he'll go down, finally. Yep, goes for that ramp shot. Unfortunately, the damage is there towards the side. 44. So about four and counting off of that first hill. And this is where Rise is going to really set up with the position that they've been able to garner here. It's going to take maybe one team fight, depending on how long Pioneers take. And maybe they'll have another one with scrap time left. That's what it's looking like here. But Zaisho is trying to attack the spawn point first. You know as well as I do, that's just as important as the hill itself. But Bronny gets flashed out, stunned, stalled out as they're turning to retreat. That's Rushies and then Brins are working together, making sure they don't go out and they cannot escape. And the damage is in. The elimination are just moments away as Inzim goes down. The revives are there, and that's what you call a wolf pack, and that's what you call a counter attack coming out from Rise. Beautiful counter as well, already chopping away at the lead, and now looking to try to get a point differential to go in their favor. Already got it up to one, waiting on the new torque to drop. That's going to be it. That's going to be the pick into the hands of Rushies. Rushies will rotate to the back side of the altar. He's going to go down for just a moment. Somebody is already there for the revive. Now looking for another retake, another chance to fight back into this. Inzem, double bounce in, gets that first shot on for the down and the chunk. Rushies, who was full red, now knows that it's a bit safer to come back into the fight. Revving the Torpo, looking for a chance to get a pick. Does get it, handles! Keeps himself out into the open just a little too long. Yeah, they did one great defense on the hill. Everybody dispersed outward. And that's the same fashion that you usually see the Pioneers playing in, in terms of them finally getting control of the here. And look at Rise from one side of the map to the next. They get control yet again. And that's thanks to Rush. He's the power weapon control that he's had from frag grenades to torque bow. He's doing everything that Rise needs in terms of holding down the weapons and making sure they don't end up in the hands of the Pioneers. What? What was that? It was a thing of beauty. Bronny goes down. He's off of respawn. 3v4 on the map right now. Uh, handles and the boys from the Pioneers have to readjust and go for another retake after the respawn comes through. Here comes the Vex. He's looking to the front side of the pillar. First shot doesn't get a full connection. He's going to be a little red. Now tagged up yet again. Another shot out. Flash will come in. Rushy goes to the back side of that cub. He's going to go in for a revive, but he's not going to get there in time. Chunk is there. Secondary kill as well. Retake by Handles and the boys from the Pioneers. Pioneers. It's in the bag. Don't they can hold their head on though on the side of Rise as they get the spawn point. Three players there, but Vexies traps himself between a rock and a hard place. Bronny's gonna be able to get the down. The elimination's gonna be cleaned up, but a 3v4 is gonna continue. Enzim goes down. Rushy's doing all he can. He gets one. Detox working in tandem as I show's gonna go down. Revives are there. The numbers are becoming too much as players are dropping left and right on the side of Rise. Detox being forced back. Rushy's as well. He's trying to survive and reunite with the Vexies, but Pioneers are hot on his tail. 
They're going to clean up that elimination, and they're going to continue to move forward. They know that power weapon control was what Rise was doing for coming back. Now they're going to cement themselves for the attack torque flow. What a big first shot by Zaisho there. The brick could have set that player down, but Rushies and Detox, they don't give up. They're not going to roll back. They're going to continue to play up into the retake of the Pioneers. One second left. Detox with a new Torque Bow. He will use that to try to get back into the next hill. Into that P4, top middle of the mid neutral lane. Torque Bow revs, misses the first shot. Will have to go for a quick active and another shot on into somebody at the Pioneers. This is where things get a little dicey. The Pioneers can't stay out in the open, so Rise has a little bit of an opportunity here to try to push up because anybody that pokes their head out could get it clean, shot off. Another missed torque comes out. Three bolts left into the quiver for Detox. He's going to have to try to find one. Here comes the next. Can't find anybody through the smoke. Shot over the top. Won't be able to get one there either. Neutralization is in due to the fact that Inzem is right there in that sneaky cubby corner. Jacob, what's the first play here? It's Detox. Detox is trying to get an angle to Torque Bow. That's why you see him trying to go out wide. The last one left in the quiver. He's at least trying to get some splash damage, but Shawnee the Menace distracts him from the side. Enzim goes down. Avexis follows quickly after. That goes back to back. Elims make it three in a row. Tic tac toe. And they're looking for the squad wipe as Detox goes down. Pioneers cement themselves on the hill. And you can look in your mini map. They're already thinking for the future. Players going to the right side of the map, controlling the spawn point, and slowly but surely inserting themselves so they can make a play for the actual hill. Zaisho looking forward here. He's going to be in this area to retake into the next point. That bottom, that top right-hand side of your mini-map, if you're looking at the mini-map. And if you're in that hill, it's going to be the top right-hand side as well. Big shot over the top. Handles gets a back A for the chunk. 3v3 on the map right now. Cells is going to have to get that call out and try to back up. Inzem's going to be in a possible 2v1. First back A is good. Miss rolls for the back second, but takes the cover and hits a big ol' hip fire for the DK by himself. Some of them bring out the bongos. My man is drumming to the beat right now, and he is feeling it. That is going to be the next hill under control of Rise here very shortly. Them all backtracking. Everybody knowing defense is going to be a must here. Vexies. He has a smoke, so he's going to try to use it as soon as they start to make their push. Neutralize the flashes. The Torque Bow is going to be picked up. Andal's going to get that one for free, but now the push is going to come in. Frag grenades as well. They're setting themselves up for a recipe for success. They just need to be able to execute here. Andal's with four bolts in the quiver, looking forward to the back side of the hill. We'll go for a little active bolt pressure there. No damage on. Vexies the bottom side of this hill. He will be waiting in the wings to get a shot on anybody that tries to come through the front side. Here comes the torque. Shot on. Splash damage will be no good. Avexis will run right into his grill, get that first kill. Now looking for the flank onto the other two teammates of the Pioneers. Miss roll out. They get the easy kill onto him. 3v1 toward Rushies. Rushies full red. Has to try to get one down here. Has to try to stay in the fight. Gets the kill. Great job by Rushies. All four players from Rise are in the area. They can continue to fight back into this. The close respawn for the Pioneers. Hasn't made it to the fight just yet. Full red on his cells. The cells will rotate down. Try to keep himself alive here. Looking for some help. Avexis gets it down toward the back. Big body shot comes out, but not enough to really chase out the kill. Andal's looking to try to get some help onto the detox. Gets that first down. Here comes Zaisho onto the front side of the hill. Gets the down, but no kill gets cleaned up yet again. Rushies out of nowhere. Gets the flank on the Zaisho, saving multiple members of Rise. Even though this is scrap time left, that's four players that are going to be able to rotate as a team. But the Lancer fire, they're hot on their heels. They don't want to let him escape, and Inzum's not going to be able to. They know a couple of players are there, but do they see Rushies waiting in the corner? They spot him at the last moment. Is he going to be able to make an impact? He is. Rushies once more finds a kill out of nowhere. These secret man plays are being so impactful and keeping Rise within distance of chopping down the lead. Look at oh. the way that Rise is just continuing to hold court here in several different areas. Detox inside of the hill. That kill comes out onto Bronny. Bronny's going to be, be bleeding out handles as well. Two players left alive for the Pioneers in the middle of the map. One down comes through. Inzem will allow him to bleed out. The Pioneers need to wait for a full retake here. They're going to have to wait for everybody to get back up off of respawn and go for a retake in just a moment. Detox, backside of the hill. Looking forward to Zaisho continuing to keep those marks live, which I think is the best bet for them, is that Rise is having the chance to keep the intel going, keep the marks alive onto their opponents. And now Inzem, with the torque in hand, goes to the active reload. Sees one player up A around the cubby, gets the kill at the pillar. Now we'll rotate back to his team and for the help, pulls the snub. Damaging shots in, Inzem rotates around, gets handles on the close shot to the spawn. Now Brawny goes down. Rise's teamwork is starting to sing a chorus of demise for the entirety of the Pioneers squad.
Got a pretty good job on that. They all hold him to very, very few points on the side of the Pioneers because they were starting to build that momentum. But they see ESL is by himself in no man's land. They're going to get that down, turn around, spot a couple more targets out. Ends him with a torque boat yet again. Not going to be able to connect, but gets so close he can taste it. And that's why he's feeling confident to get aggressive. But Bronny shuts one down towards the backside. The position is going to be held by handles. But Detox is going to drop, trade it off back and forth. Rushy's unable to get the elimination. But Enzim is there just in the nick of time with a perfect place. Torque bow to take him out, but he ends up in a 2v1. The hill for now is going to go on over towards the Kansas City Pioneers, but they only have two players directly in the hill. If the rise strikes quick, they strike fast, they'll be able to go ahead and neutralize that advantage. Avexi sitting here at the cubby, waiting for somebody to maybe go for a flank, maybe waiting for his opportunity. Throws out the smoke, wilds the judgment of one player, and now they'll start to push him for the neutralization. Double bounce in from Acells, won't be able to get that first one. Shot on, Avexis will get that first kill. Acells goes for the wrap, and you see them backing up, playing defensively. They get that kill. Holding on to a very narrow lead are the Pioneers. Handles not hitting the shots over the top. He'll go down. Now it'll be up to Zaisho. Rotating toward that next hill in that area to try to play from that side of the map. Avexis bouncing around, looking for his next target to shoot upon. He'll bounce back behind Detox, playing a little defensively, playing toward the hill. Smart job, smart idea. They have the retake here. This is what will happen. All four players. Inzem on the flank right at the moment. He gets one. Inzem's about to get two. He got the down on Bronny as well. And that shuts down another defensive, or that shuts down another offensive retake by the Pioneers and sets up the defensive stand for Rise. He's going to steal away the spawn, so he's in another important battle that he's going to win. Two more players in front of him. Fresh Frag's going to be picked up on the side of the Pioneers. Rushies once more gets his hands on that sweet, sweet Torque Bow. And another hill after gaining a 40-point lead. They're going to be able to get and maximize their time once more. And Pioneers, they're going to have to make sure, no matter how many times it takes, that they get inside of this hill and at least neutralize it away from rides. A close Torque Bow is going to miss, but the Frag Grenade is not. And there goes the opening elimination for the Pioneers. Here we go. Avexis gets one, but he'll go down after the big body shot. Looking for another opportunity here. This is going to be a sell to the back side of the hill. Gets uh, Inzem to bait into him. Gets that kill. Now Rushy's by himself. He's going to get tagged up for multiple angles. Full red. Goes for maybe a wrap. Gets taken down. One more player in the area left for Rise. I'm sure they have called him out here toward the back side of the hill, which will be enough for them to continue to feel a little bit more confident in their retake. Detox goes from slide and he'll die. Every ability else for Rise will rotate toward Alter, will rotate toward that P1 area to try to go for a split push. 2-2, try to get the close respawn in their favor. 247 to 200. This will come down to the next hill, P3 or P4, give or take how many points either team gets in their advantage. And I don't think either of the weapons are going to be up for maybe another couple of seconds, particularly the frag grenades, the torque bow, possibly so. That's why you see a mad dash and fight for control over that side of the map. But it's also a great passageway for the next hill. Zai Show taking a lot of damage. The team down is going to come through. An accidental blunder on the side of a cells, but that will harm. No fouls. The revive was quick as a hiccup. Zai Show trying to make up. He moves forward. The damage has started. Handle's going to finish it. Eliminations. Downs falling left and right. Rise unable to make something happen here. It's it's all falling in way of the Kansas City Pioneers once more. They're going to be able to break through, get the actual hill. But Colin, if you check it, the spawn point goes over to Rise. So if they play their cards right, they can have a great shot at defense here. Let's see what Handles does as he steps up into this area, looks across the map toward that point area, toward the respawn of the close area for the side of Rise. Big pick there by Handles. Oh, no, not a big pick. Big bad pick. That's going to be... Oh, he changed it. That's a eight. He just made up for it. My man Handle said, I might have killed two of my teammates and one of you. Let me get another one real quick and level out the playing field and make you wait for your respawns. I show. Just like we it's are. Zysho. Zysho's going on a full-on flank towards the backside. You know he's going to put some damage out with the Lancer. Rise might know it because they're trying to go now. But oh! one gets taken out. Asaos gets two. He's going oh. for three. The down is in. He made the magic happen as he led the charge. Bronny's going to clean it up. That scrap time's going for the Pioneers. And you can see everybody dispersing. Even the respawn players, Rushies and Detox, because they know how important this next position is. Oh. Big body shot by Handle. Sets one down. Meat shield in hand. Rushies has to rotate out now. He can't go for the back gate for the clean kill. Three players from Rise. Right side of the map. Here comes the first frag. Shuts him out of the neutralization position. A few more moments left. Probably 15 seconds before this hill will respawn. Now we see here. Next angle in from Handles. Looking for the opportunity to get a flank. Uh -oh. Don't even need it. 
Hill will respawn here momentarily. Rise will have another good retake attempt here as soon as this hill comes up. The end zone is probably waiting for that next torque bow. Ronnie knows the idea is there that somebody might try to flank around, maybe even spotting him out, but the points are going to get started unless Detox holds this spot. He has no other place to go. Otherwise, the Pioneers will continue to rack up that time and build that lead. But you see a 1v1 on the other side of the map. Two players thinking about the future here. Possible spawn points as well. And that's why everybody, they're trusting their teammates on the other side. This is just full-on trust all around. And I like the way that Detox is playing this. At that cubby, flash out. He might try to rebound it off that cover for the double stun. Gets it to go as well. Plays up into the front side of that hill. Shot over the top. He's going to be red now. Somebody gets that extra angle to the left-hand side of the 90 degree. Gets the kill onto him. Now rotates to the back side. It forces Rise out of the hill. And ladies and gentlemen, that could be the opportunity because now down to 25 seconds. Boys from the Pioneers can win off of this hill, but Inzem, Inzem's won a huge 1v1 on the opposite side of the map. Inzem has opened things up on that side of the map for a chance for a retake here. Inzem gets called out by Zaisho. Zaisho tries to make a move there. Won't be able to get it. Now Pioneers spawn up just in front of him. Revive on to Bronny. Bronny will be here with a teammate waiting for the respawns to come out, but the respawns from Pioneers on the opposite side of the map, they're going to be in Hell's Half Acre trying to fight off everybody from Rise momentarily. Handles is going straight for that scrap time on the hill. They might not be able to win off of it, Colin, but they're going to get close. Torque is even threading the needle here. The mark is out. You see the plan, the focus, everything intact, and Handles wins the 1v1. That's just going to build the time, inch them closer to victory. Frag grenades as well. Another elimination. Rise is falling right before our very eyes. The comeback is real. The Pioneers get another elimination. Avexis goes in. He quickly goes out, and the time is ticking. The Pioneers take map number one away from Rise. Unbelievable map number one, back and forth, teeter-totter. You couldn't have expected anything less from these two squads. The Cells, it gets your match MVP there, but that was a total team performance. I mean, what an incredible output of damage, assists, kills from everybody. All eight players, it comes down to two final team fights Jacob just two of them the one at that mid neutral lane top side by the altar and then the next one at that final point those are the inches that matter in this matchup those are the little single steps that can win a team mm -hmm. a big fight and move them forward rather than putting them a step behind now a map behind yeah you know we were talking about it during the previous matchups when we were off in the green room discussing it's one fight, one crucial fight can really turn the tides of a match at any moment. And that was a crucial fight one. You gotta give all the shout outs in the world to a cell stepping up big to the plate, knocking out of the park. Bronny again, having that MVP caliber event because he too followed up with a double kill of his own. It's almost looking like the pioneers are returning to their championship form. They need to find it a little bit more right here, though, if they want to continue this matchup forward, try to take a victory here and then go back into the gauntlet against a United. Rise, on the other hand, they need to stay composed. Uh, they, they remind me a lot of some other teams that if the emotions get a little too high, if they run a little too hot, they could cool off just as much. So that's what the worrying factor for me is. Can Rise settle themselves back in going into execution now? Can they get the things back onto the belt to be able to win that map too? Yeah, I, I do believe they can. They've shown that they have the potential, especially throughout the regular season, E-Days, previous majors events. The biggest thing that you kind of even said, their emotions. They cannot continue to play with their hearts on their sleeve. They got to turn into the robots. And, and honestly, that's not going to be something easy, Colin, because a lot of these players, they lead with their emotions because they're passionate. They want to win that championship. Do you have any tips for these guys to kind of minimize that aspect of the game? Uh, mistakes happen. At the end of the day, you got to remember that you're just a human. You can get frustrated all you want. What your best bet is in any situation here where you're trying to control your own emotions, trying to control what's happening around you, I always kind of lean into this. Sometimes it's easier and it's greater to be a better teammate. If somebody you can tell is visibly, vocally, whatever it might be, frustrated, immediately be a bit bigger and a better teammate. Just start pumping that guy up. Talk about the things he did right. The little mistakes that you make throughout a map can be washed away. You can go into an execution now and worry about something else. But at the end of the day, 
you've got to be a good teammate. you got to pick him up and say, hey, look, you might have lost that 1v toward the end of the map, but don't worry, you can pick it up. You'll win one here to help us win map two. Don't worry, man. You remember that time you won the 2v1 earlier in the map, man? You even put us in a position to be able to try to win that map. Do that. Be a teammate that's willing to help pick your teammates up rather than being the guy that's going to help put your teammates down. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing, because at this high of level, I know Benson said it so long ago, I do believe in, in years ago, that at this high of level of any game, everybody's going to be able to hit a shot. Everybody's going to be able to wall bounce, reaction shot. They're good with power weapons. But it's the decisions that you make that matter most. The rotations, where you position yourself, where you put the focus as an individual in a roster. That's what really separates. And that's why early on yesterday, I got so frustrated as a couple players were giving up. And it's just because the situation that we're in, you don't begin to deflate and give up. You got to be able to fight with every fiber of your being. So coming out of this next one, I need to see Rise show us that actions will speak louder than words, that they want this championship more than ever. Come I'm out the gate swinging it's not going to be an easy task whatsoever because the pioneers i think they're back on the right track the platform that they gave themselves before back onto that blueprint so you're really going to have to dig deep i wonder how deep they can dig i wonder how deep the well is how deep the gas tank is however you want to say it, whatever metaphor you want to use because both of these teams they're going to have to go a while here they're not going to just have to win this best of five they've got to go forward and win a best of nine with a one map disadvantage against a red hot united team that is the thing that we've got to be concerned with we've seen it time and time again jake you come into this losers finals you put everything on the line you know that you got to win this to even make it back to that grand finals and you just you're just gassed my brother you are just out of it right now it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. And that's why I said it before this match even started that in the back of their minds, they have to realize this is just the start of their day. It's not going to end here. It's not even going to be halfway over here because that's an extended series. If they make it towards that grand final, sorry, I'm just trying to look at a replay because that torque bow that handles hit late early on in the uh, round. I do believe he torqued his teammate. And his teammate jumped into a, his opponents for the double kills. That is absolutely crazy. I, sometimes, sometimes something nuts just works out right. Sometimes you got to get a little nuts like Michael Keaton as Batman, my brother, back in 89 when he told the joke. He said, you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Right now, looking at the next map, Tomb, we've seen a, a pretty deep bag of tricks. And, and Affinity said earlier they didn't have to go deep in the playbook against the Knights. He said the Knights ran their strats a little cocky. They didn't think that they had the ability to re-rotate. Do you think we'll see much of the same? Do you think we see a rise map two coming out of here with a tie ball game going into Vascar? I think for the most part that we are going to see a very, very mirrored strategy. These guys like to fight fire with fire towards the middle of the map. They trust the cells and Bronny towards the top side to kind of be that one, two punch combo. So I do think it's going to be rise that might have to dig into their bag of tricks, depending on how they feel. I want to see them go into that bag of tricks early though, instead of doing it when they're on the back foot, trying to have something happen, hoping for a prayer. I want to see them outsmart, outstrap these guys, because almost you can begin to believe that in the beginning of these executions they are going to get aggressive they are going to have a cells trying to get in towards the middle brawny move up and handle short behind so you got to be able to take advantage of that and just outsmart them they have an opportunity to depending upon how long this entire map goes we are simply waiting on one more player to get into the lobby so that we can get this thing started you know these players they're, they're probably using every single solitary moment yep. to try to and i don't want to say delay the inevitable map to start but Basically, use up every moment possible to try to talk it out, work it out, make sure that everything is solidified. This is this is their biggest match of the weekend. You could have lost in pool play and been all right coming into bracket play. You could have taken an early loss in bracket play because you'd have ended up probably in the same damn spot you sitting in. Losers finals. Can't lose no more. Can't take no more than males. You might have been able to hold one early in the tournament. You might have been able to hold one on Friday. Right now, your hands... Your hands only got time for one thing, and that's W's. Can't can only hold W's. They got three handles for you to try to take control of as well. That's the thing. L is just one big stick. I mean, you got to either go the short end or long end. And with a W, you got two nice symmetrical ends you can grab onto it. Sometimes it almost look like a boomerang, baby. You want to throw it and then catch it with the other hand because it looks so good. What if you turn it upside down and put an M? It means you can have money, baby. Come on. That's why oh. you're the best. Bro. That, I, that was not Come planned. On. That was not staged. It was not scripted. Colin is just a man. You got the words of a god. Are you a poet? I, I feel just, like I, you took poetry classes. You had to have. 
that just comes from you and I sitting on stage together, sitting in green rooms together, just chopping it up time after time. So I know where your head's going. I know how to pick up what you putting down. I'm like, I see you, Jacob. I know where you're going with this, baby. PR, you just all you got to do is lead me to the promised land. That's all I ever told you. Since the day they put it together, I said, look, you just lead us to the promised land. I'll follow you into the sunset, baby. You be the Lone Ranger. I'll be your Tonto. Come on now. What do you want to jump on board with first? I kind of want to do Bronny on the Pioneers because I know the position he yeah. plays if they run a normal strat. I'm just thinking, man. I'm trying to think who kind of Honestly, either that or I would say a Cells because he, he – Yeah. The last time I saw a Cells go underneath here at Tomb, he goes underneath the, the actual Tomb itself into that single pillar when they played the Knights against Raver, and he just tortured Raver. And I, I would like to see if Rise has some kind of counter for that, if they try to match that energy or who they put into – that matchup to be able to get that same kind of energy, that same kind of output. Cause that, those are the big differentials to me. I mean, that big pillar, that big post that, you know, strangulate. I, I talked to, I talked to him about this map when it came out. He said, look, that, that area is meant to be played over. It's meant to be a power position. You get in there, it gives you that verticality. You're not up top. You don't see the whole map, but you can help it to garden. You can help it to pillars. You can help all the way down to the other side of the box. I mean, it is a power position without a doubt. And then your opponent almost has to make a risky play in order to deal with you, popping themselves out in the open to go ahead and try to take that spot there in the middle. But when everything's said and done, that's Rise that I think I put the pressure on to run some different strategies. And then I do want to see it early on. Maybe even try to slow the game down, throw a shock on the sniper, play up top for frags, ice them early on, frustrate the Kansas City Pioneers and get them to make moves earlier than they probably would in the matchup. Because if you start to run those strats later on, when you're down two to zero, three to zero, there's already a little doubt in your mind. So you're not being able to focus 100% on those strategies because you're worried about will they work? If they work, can this work? And there's so many other questions that you begin to ask yourself. It's a lot of questions. It's a lot of opportunities. It's a lot of things, a lot of possibilities. So many things that you can really be looking at every time you roll out a spawn and a round of execution and a map of execution because there's so many little variables each and every time. I believe I got word finally that these players have loaded into the map. See, I'm not even I'm not even a lobby leader. Look at this. My my controller's over here. I haven't even picked it up. I haven't even It literally just booted Colin. I know you pressed the button. You, you're trying to lie to us, Colin. You're trying to pull the wool over our eyes, but we see right through you. That's a beautiful cotton shirt, and I know you can see right through that shirt. Is it soft? It's probably it's probably very, very soft. What's the thread count? I shoot, I don't know. My wife buys my shirts, man. She dresses oh, it's me. Definitely you think I dress soft. myself? You think I dress definitely myself? Soft. Boy, come on now. Come on now. I had to change shirts. I interviewed two players earlier today in a in a violet, like a soft purple shirt. I had to go to my wife. I said, I am sweating buckets out here, baby. She said, why is it? I don't know. It's hot. It's hot in this house. It's hot outside. Virginia weather got me on the back foot, baby. I'm, I'm swinging it air right now. See, you say it's because of the sweat, but we know you like to look fresher than somebody hosting the Grammy, so don't play with us, Colin. We know you're the best dressed by a long shot, but Rise and Pioneers match is underway. Bronny's the player I wanted to see. He takes a lot of that damage. Inzum is just waiting for a moment, but Zaisho with the one-two punch, but if Exes and Detox, they have plans of their own. This is already looking like a bloodbath, but Detox will get the final blow, taking down Zaisho and getting themselves that early round number one. Early round number one, like you said, that is early, but that's 22 seconds for Rise. That won't even a half minute, brother. From the time they came out of the swarm nest to the stained glass to the time everybody was on, they come on now. It was 22 right, seconds. Let's, do this. let's go. 22, man. That was a quick one. Blink, you might have missed it. That's why we're going to go right into another round. Back on board, Brawny, right into the thick of it. Once again, unable to really cement himself towards that tree, but the trades once again will continue, but it's falling this way in favor of the Pioneers as cells is beginning to go off. He's beginning to heat up here in this matchup with Rushies going down 3v1, hands too full. The Pioneers tie us up. One to one we go. This map is delivering. That one, oh, one second longer. Sorry, Pioneers. You don't you don't get the same kind of hype, man. That was 23 seconds. I'm sorry. You didn't you didn't make it as fast. You didn't make it as fast. 23 is still a good number. I mean, it is a pretty good number, wasn't it? Let's get these. Jordan. Pieces. Yeah, I was gonna say Jordan with 23. I'm not talking about Michael Jordan either. I'm talking about Jordan J. Ritten. No, 
money again. Look at the targets. They immediately know how to kind of counteract as Zaisho was hot on his heels on the other side. Acells knows the players are weak. They're getting Lancer down, but Detox blows right past him, takes him out, gets the revive as well. The man advantage goes on over to Rise in just a few moments. They're going to start picking up those power weapons. Rushy's doing a good job of backtracking while dealing that damage. Makes it that much easier, but finally Zaisho's able to catch up with him. Takes out one, but he still has three more targets in front of him, and Detox is one of them. Takes him out, and Rise go up two to one. Two to one, Rise back and forth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very close map. Needing to get a couple of rounds in a row by either team to really take the full advantage of it. Just right now, both teams are giving each other their best possible shot. Coming into this next round, we'll see if anything changes up. If either team goes for a different strategy here, it looks like we're going to see one player from both teams try to make out to those middle pillars. Actually, the Pioneers are going to send three through the middle. You see Rise going to the bottom side of the map. Rush is going to go for the quick pick here on the Torpo. Difference of opinion. Pioneers flying straight across. Pick early from Rushies. Looking for a second here. Doesn't even need it. Tries to drop. Oh, <laughs> handles out of nowhere with a side swipe. Didn't even see that one coming. He was just... He's just snuck up on the haymaker. They're keeping their distance. Rise, nose, don't play with your food. Shawnee's a menace. They're just gonna keep it. I'm making it happen. It's 35 seconds. Quick round after quick round. And a quick strategy change coming out of Rise to keep the pioneers on their toes. Good job by Rise. That's what I was talking about. They've got to be able to dictate the pacing. They gotta be able to dictate the strategy in which they go about this map number two here on Tomb. We'll see if Rise goes with another different strategy, if they go with a different look yet again, or if the Pioneers get baited across the map and do a ton of Lance of Fire. Back to the OG strat. One, two, one across the map here. Bronny's going to be tagged up pretty red, but looks like he's going to try to go for possibly a little bit of helping hand in case his teammate goes down. Bates in the up bait, doesn't hit it, and Bronny, I think that had to be a misclick. There's no way he was meaning to do that there. Back gang directly into the garden. Another round will go over to Rise. This will be... Order one. 26 seconds. These quick rounds. And this is where I want to see the Pioneers begin to try to switch it up. Because right now, it's just not working. They have that one directional, aggressive play style. And this is where you're either going to match them at the Torque Bow down low. Or maybe even play up top for those frag grenades. Set yourself up for a possible overtime scenario. And then you can go back to your quick, decisive Square. play style. Next round coming out here. Let's see what happens in this next area. As... Leave of X, he's looking shot on here. Two Bronny early on. They're going to try to match him here. Bronny tries to go for the up A around the cubby. Won't be able to get it. Now sees the flashes coming. He's going to be stunned by the secondary one. He's going to get walked right up on by Rush. He's a big brick comes out. Shot over the top. We'll get the down. They're going to have to challenge up a little bit. Try to go for this multi-team down. They get a bunch of damage, but no finishing blows. Now Zaisho in the middle of the map trying to get a down of his own. Will chase out possibly a kill. Miss roll will allow Azels to win that fight. Zaisho wins the torque bow on the opposite end, but zaisho has been down. Big headshot by Acells here. Three players down and dead. One more to worry about. Just Rushies versus the world. And he gets his head blown off by Acells as well. Four to two. Said a quick strategy change. Sometimes it's all that's needed. Give him a different look. And you, you got to plant that seed, Colin. You know as well as I do. As soon as they believe you have different strategies, they're not going to be as quick to hit in some of these positions on the map. You can see it. As soon as they got that first elimination, they didn't let up off the gas. Great connections with the cells as well. Time and time again, he's going to be a player that's hard to stop. On the side of the Pioneers, the Rise are doing their darndest back to the scene of the crime here. But this time, it's going to be a little bit of a switch up. Two crossfires. They have their target on the Brawny. The first down is going to come through. Rushies waste no time getting that cleanup. See Zaisho here challenging across the map here, trying to put in some pressure toward the middle respawn moment. That's going to be Detox full red now. He's going to have to be concerned. Gets a secondary kill as he slides out of that cubby. Of Xyz now will have know that they still have the man advantage. It'll be Rise with a 3-2 to two, a victory count as Rushies now makes it 3v1. Zaisho picks, the, picks up the long shot, maybe tries to go for a headshot, but he's going to get Lancer down. They're going to just finish him off. 5-2 now on map point Rise. We're going to tie it up. This is all Affinity. Affinity gets all the credit in the world for these strategies because even though they still have their focus on a Torque Bow, they're switching up how they're working around the map, and which is absolutely phenomenal to see Rise taking championship form right before our very eyes. That one was a focus strat, and Bronny took the bait to perfection. Let's see what type of trickery they have up their sleeve this time because it already looks different. Bronny looking here to 
try to match up against somebody down by the torque bow. You see Handles try to poke out and try to surprise one player. Gets the double shot for the down. Now he's going to get challenged out by two. Goes to the back A. Gets shot and melee down. Little shot punch, but multiple players from Ryzen out down. It'll be rushing to the Torpo. Last alive for his squad. Puts out one shot. Won't be able to get it. Gets the tag onto his cells. Full red rush. He's looking for another one. Won't be able to find that one. He's going to be tagged up, taken down. 5-3. They got to be perfect here. Three more rounds in a row for the Pioneers. If they want to be able to get a win on this map, two and go up 2-0. Otherwise, it'll be just one round to win for Ryze to tie it up. Yeah, obviously so, Colin, because in order to win it, they have to win a total of four straight rounds, three in a row after that last one. The way Rise is playing, if Pioneers win it, it is a well-deserved victory. And honestly, it leads me to concern with it not only a 2-0 victory, but the fashion in which it's happening. So this is a must-win map for multiple reasons on the side of Rise. And once again, you can see them trying to put the focus, baiting Bronny in to get that torque, but, but this time around, he doesn't take the bait. Rushies will look across to the Torpo here. Nobody to get shots on just yet. Zysho will back up into the spawn point. And Zen is full red. He's going to have to settle his tea kettle, wait for somebody for maybe a little bit of help here. Vexies will jump across. He's going to try to go for the rotation here. Shot on to Zysho. Two players mounted up toward that ledge. Down on the opposite side of the map. Now a secondary down. Cells is dead. Now Handles is down again. This could be easily just the floodgates opening up. And that's exactly what it is. Six to three. Ladies and gentlemen, Rise, they have answered back officially in this loser's final matchup. They have tied the ball game one to one. We've got a map three escalation coming up to take the lead for a chance to go at E United in the grand finals. Who will be there? Find out just after this quick commercial break. Gentlemen, welcome back to the loser's final matchup here just before Grand Finals. Winner of this will get the chance to play United, but right now, just like Detox was looking down at that body, he's, we are looking down at a 1-1 one, one map count. Lead will have to be taken to map number three, but Jacob, are you surprised? Given that we talked about Rise's bag of tricks, their playbook, are you surprised they came away with a map two victory? No, I'm not surprised at all. Like I said, they're going to dig into that bag pretty early, even if it's micro and minor adjustments to be made. And they were kind of catching these players out. I don't think the Kansas City Pioneers expected that many change-ups that quick. Well, we'll see if they can continue to push the envelope, push the momentum back against the Pioneers. Because to me, Jacob, this is this is the thing that is the scariest part of all this. You're seeing both of these teams put their best foot forward. And this ain't grands, baby. This is for a chance to make it there. We're going to Vascar. We've seen it a million times this weekend. You and I have joked about how many times we've been there. But it has made or broken a lot of series this weekend. It has been the proving ground, the stomping ground for a lot of our top teams. What does one team have to do over the other to get the advantage? Let's start with the Pioneers. What is it that they can do to get the advantage to overrise? Hey, not to sound like a copycat, but Franz Keys and Sex were on point. They are champions. They have to play and act like they are the defending champions. They kind of reinvented the meta that we're seeing right now with the Wolfpack aggression from all over and all different angles, and they need to stick true to what they've invented. And then that's one of the biggest strengths that they can hold their hat on because it's not something that they have to plan. It's not something that they have to really communicate. They just have to play as themselves. Opposite end of that bracket, what is the thing that Rise must now do to keep the momentum, to keep the benefactor on their side going into this map three, looking at Vascar, all the different weapon placements, the power weapons that they might be able to put down, the strategies they might be able to enact. What is it? What is the one thing that you think is most important? Unconditional 
confidence. These guys are going to be tested throughout this match. They're going to have moments where doubt is a potential to seep into their minds. They have to not let it happen. Confidence has to be at an all-time high for these guys because, like you said, Vascar is going to be a very, very aggressive map. You can go down three to zero, but you have to know and believe that that comeback is potential around any single corner. And that's going to be one of Rise's biggest problems as a team in full. They start to lose confidence confidence in each other they lose confidence in themselves so that's something that's going to be key unconditional confidence we will see if these keys your keys that you've added on to france even though you echoed one of his sentiments you're reiterating them now you're keeping these teams you're keeping the public eye in line there's a whole lot of opinions out there there's a whole lot of murmurs out there about who's going on who's going home who's going to face the united in that best of nine what we will have to take note of, though, is that in this map three, these first couple of rounds usually tell us a lot about who is feeling the momentum, who is feeling their shot hitting ability. Because you see a lot of times those 3v3s on one side with one player fighting over that B-Hilla, 1v1 on one side, just to try to win it, take that early point advantage and put your opponent in a bad spot. This time, Rise, they're gonna go with a full four-man push in round one over toward the C-Hill. Man, that's a 4v3 advantage for Rise. They have to take advantage of it quick. Detox gets one. Rushies gets number two and the early lead and the initial is going to go on over towards Rise. But they have to be able to defend all sides of the map. You can see two players, Bronny and Zaisho. They're going to be caught towards the neutral side of the map. So right now, what they're going to be looking to do is split up that defense as Bronny's waiting and secret manning by himself for that perfect moment. Rushies will roll back here. Tagged up a little bit. Big kill by Enzem, though. Continuing to keep the Pioneers on the back foot. Now we'll see another chase out. Inzem got one player full red. One more shot on his eye. show will get him down. That's going to be him down. Now possibly dead. Neutralization by Bronny at the A-Hill. 1v1 toward of X. He's about to be a 2v1 here very shortly. Bronny's going to try to rotate away, try to escape. Detox waiting in the wings for him. Lancer out, trying to put out the damage. They get him down. Detox will be full red, but nobody's there. For the final shot on for the killing blow. Rise have dominated the early goings of this round one. Pioneers are going to have to get a team fight victory if they want to try to be able to put them on the back foot. Love this proactivity at Rise as well. Even though they already have two, they're still taking advantages while they can. But Detox slips up. He gets shut down. There goes the sign of retreat for the remaining members of Rise. They already have the two hills to one. They have a 40 plus point lead and counting. It's only a matter of time before Pioneers slip up trying to get over aggressive here. As Detox fresh off the respawn, he knows players are damaged. Tries to go for that additional angle and he's going ahead and doing a good job. But he goes down. Zaicho gets the down onto him. But if Xyz pushes up this is a back and forth battle of all team fire all the way rushies picks up the beat shield very quickly has to drop it off into the right side double kill triple kill three out of the four dead ends them last alive for his squad over in b he might get the call out that one player is trying to rush over to him go for the possible flank angle just a few more moments in this situation it'll be a cells Inzem, beautiful job to pick up that position. The other three players from Rise that have respawned have gone toward the A-Hill, looking for neutralization. Inzem might rotate over as well to try to give them the four advantage over here, the four-man retake. Inzem goes down, trying to skedaddle away. If he dies here, you're going to see the over-rotation continue to try to push across the map. 1v1 at the C-Hill momentarily. It'll be Zaisho trying to hold off Detox. Rushies, along with the Vexies here at the home hill, trying to just keep the Pioneers at bay. I like that decision to retreat out of both Bronny and Acelles. They already have two to one. They know a player was going to spawn right behind. They're trying to dash across the map. One down is going to come through. They're being forced on the chain revise, but I like Rise not overstepping their boundaries to put themselves in shotgun range while simultaneously trying to capture the hill. Wind condition goes on over to Rise once more like a seesaw on a playground, but this is where it gets dirty. Detox with the back A. Rushy's trying to get the last stand. They're going to be able to hold on, but on the other side of the map, Bronny by himself trying to make the moves but it's too little too late even with that shutdown rise will still come out on top way to keep the momentum in your favor way to keep the momentum on your side of things that's what rise is able to do there a big gamey push by the pioneers trying to take that round away trying to steal it away from rise ends up getting shut down toward the later portions of it of course we're going to see those ever vaulted boltox being placed down by both teams both teams also extraordinarily deadly with it this time. 
and Rise continue to hold off the Pioneers. We'll see if the Pioneers go for the same strategy. A little bit of a four-man push on the one side. As a matter of fact, this is a different strategy. This is Rise throwing out one of their possible playbook maneuvers. Three players over to B-Hill, but it's matching up the three players of the Pioneers. It'll be another headbutt fight. Flash grenades go out. Detox moving in within Zem toward the backside of the tank. Back gays are trying to be good and true. Detox down, answered back, but here comes the fly and die by Avex. He's one more to go. Full red. He trades out. Handles wins a massive final fight there to get the B-Hill in the favor of the Pioneers early in this one. And it rushes. He's probably going to take his advantage here. He's going to push up, try to use that Boltock to get some early dish damage, early initial prov provincial damage onto his cells. He's by himself, too, because of how confident he's playing. He's probably getting a cause. Now he's creating some distance. And on the other side of the map, he's allowing his team to fight this 3v2, but it's actually going to be a 2v2. The first down is going to come in. There goes Zaisho trying to retreat and be that third player. The extra reinforcements on the other side of the map, and he's going to let them know he's in position. They're ready to go. They got the green light, but Rushy's putting out an immense amount of damage. He's able to get a trade onto one. Vexies joins the fray, but just a little bit too late, but the flank will continue with Detox going for the Mr. Krabs play. The decap is in. The capture is out, but he goes down. That play is going to be stopped dead in its tracks. But the damage has been done. Rises two to one is gonna allow them to get the lead back. Damage has been done up over 100 points now. Avex, he's trying to back in and back A out from this position. He's gonna get tagged up in the 90 degree. One down comes through, revive instantaneous. Avexis will go down. Cells will chase out toward that side of the map. Double cap coming in for the Pioneers. They're gonna try to get this off very quickly before they may have to rotate over and help their teammate today. Waiting for the option to go. Inzem will be in a 1v1 against Handles on that side of the map. Smoke will come out. Nacelles is going to back up here. Gets the spawn shield noise for just a moment, I believe. 2v1 here. Inzem is going to back off toward B at the bottom of the stairwell. Going to bounce up, trying to go for maybe one kill. They finish him off very quickly, and they are going to push forward just to ensure that they get the retake somewhere. Back and forth we go. Avexi's not full red. Back over to the Sea Hill. Pioneer's going for another neutralization. One player has bled out, and the Pioneers have met up the 2v2 here at the home hill. Luckily, Zaisho did get spotted out by Detox. They know he's there. No sneaky plays for him. Rightfully so. He was a much needed reinforcement in that position. And another player is going to backtrack with that elimination. I do believe it might have been onto Avexi's early on. Everybody trying to rotate around, but Fries. They get taken down as Pioneers were quick to the trigger. They get two. Acel's on the other side of the map. Gets shut down, though, by Avexis. He's doing all he can to keep his team within reach as they get that second hill back underneath their control. Inzem might have to take the engage this oh. fight sooner rather than later. Handles wins the fight, though. Gets the one hit of Quitta. And now it's going to be a 2v2 with the A hill. This is a chance for Rise to maybe take this back into their favor. Try to take it out from underneath the feet of the Pioneers. Detox bouncing up. Shot over the top. Gets the kill. The down is in. The chunk is through. Acels, he stands tall in a big 2v1 to tie up map number three. That was a massive 2v1 as Rise were once again trying to make those last ditch efforts happen. This is where I said that unconditional confidence. They got to stay at an all time high here throughout the course of this series and beyond to the grand finals. Retro is going to be upgraded on the pioneer side of things. And this is where Rise, they have those tricks. They usually keep that bull talk. So I do believe we're going to see a talent here in place. Now we're looking for another opportunity in this next hill for somebody to get the advantage for the team. Somebody to take it forward, take the favor. A really big differential to me is just how, how incredible this back and forth has been on Vascar. Both of the teams giving everything they have. Rise going for the 3v1 here at the B hill. 3v2 as a matter of fact. One player may back up to try to help out in a 2v2 situation. Bronny over the top getting shots onto Inzem, trying to tag up his shoulder. But Rushy's already. He shuts down his cells and now handles. Can he win a 2v1 here? Can he try to get one victory for his squad? Goes to the roadie strafe, gets shot in the back, and this could be a very quick round if the Pioneers don't win a fight somewhere on the map. 
Or at least trying to get the decap in the form of Saisho, who's by himself. All this work is extra, but he needs to get it done. 1v1, him versus Detox. Detox comes out on top. Inzum was trying to make that rotation, and this is where he's going to spot all those respawn players, get some marks, slowly move in towards the backside, but that's a Cell's nose waiting in the wings, but finally makes the rotation because they have a 3v2. As long as they continue to go forward, Zaisho is going to watch every single member on the flank. The eliminations aren't being picked up at the perfect time, but Vexy strikes back, taking out Brawny, but that allows them to keep moving forward and get that second hill, which they desperately need to stop the bleeding. Look at the cells here on top of the A hill. Neutralization in. They need to hold on to a two to one hill advantage for quite some time to try to come back into this round. 121 to 55. You're looking at probably about a 35 second differential. Brawny here will have to worry about two players pressuring into him. Flash comes out. Both players are stunned. They're going to go to the front side of these planters. One back A misses. Second one does not. It will get the chunk. Now Inzem bouncing around trying to stay alive. There's the revive. It's a big body shot on one player. He's full red. One more spread. Will get the down and dead. Last two players to rise alive are going to skedaddle on over to me. Try to go up for the defense. This will be going to be player three of Xyz. First one into the fight. Flash grenade over the top. Won't get the stun. Brawny will be tagged up. Zyshow's there for the help. Nobody really getting a ton of damage done to Xyz, as a matter of fact. Triple cap domination denied for now. Three players in the area for Rise. They're going to get one down, but no cleanups. Two players dead for the Pioneers. They are in the lead in this round. A and C under their control. A oh, perfect mark. Not able to hide the perfect shots from Acells. That's going to be a big brick over the top. Rushies. He goes down, back to back, to walk to multi-kill. Strikes again with another 1v1 beneath his eyes, but Vexy is gonna be the A-maker as he shuts him down. Tries to get the decap on the hill, bringing it back on down. over, but the down is there. The damage is out. Enzim saves the day once more as the hill will trade hands on both fronts, their home and the neutral. Looking for another retake. Rise is gonna have to come off of respawn and fight the 3v3 at the C-hill. You can see the 1v1 at the, the B-hill is basically a last ditch effort, a last second chance for anybody. Flash grenades are gonna come out every second that's been bought is crucial for their squad. I believe Bronny is trading with his opponent here. Bronny's gonna go toward A. Seven seconds to victory. It's nobody into the sea hill just yet. One more player left alive for the attempt. He goes down. So does Rise. 2-1. Pioneers take the lead. This is where after every single round, especially back-to-back -back rounds that are that close, Colin, just watching rides and figuring if they're losing that confidence. Are they losing the pizzazz? Because this is a very, very big map. It's tied up one-to-one -one if you guys are just tuning in. And what Colin said before it, I still believe as well. Vascar, we've seen so many teams crumble after receiving a loss. Shot grenade on the side of the Pioneers. Retro revving up on the side of Rise. Go fuck their shit up. Pioneers looking to use that utility probably to the best of their advantage. I kind of like the way that Rise has gone about their weapon placements. Okay. A little bit of an issue here, guys, going on. This is Losers Finals, Colin. Is this a live round? I think, I think everybody's loaded in. We're good, Colin. I think the show is back on the road here. And that might be a little bit breather that Rise can use to talk about a little bit of extra strategy. We'll go in depth just a little bit more and try to figure out how to close out some of these rounds. Ronnie looking to the front side of this fight now. Looking for an opportunity to try to get a fight to go onto somebody. 3v2 on this side of the map toward the tank. 2v1 on the opposite side toward the sea hill. Detox will have the flash in his face. Rushies hits a reaction and shuts one down. Now it'll be up to Detox to try to get a few more kills in their favor. And look at him just holding him out of the B-Hill, trying to ensure that he doesn't even get a chance for the neutralization. Players, though, set up on the other side of the map. Three players from the rise trying to fake through, but Vexies goes down early. Rushies leads the charge. That's going to be a big elimination on Zai Show because the Cells has no choice but to try to keep backtracking in his steps. Handles joins the mix, trying to be the reinforcement that he needs, but he's not hiding. He's showing himself, trying to intimidate his opponents and force a rotation out. And I do believe he did just enough because he sends him drop towards the middle. He's backtracking around as soon as he got the call of three players of Pioneers directly in front of him. 
Look at Avex. He's here holding down the retro at this 45 degree angle. He's going to be able to put out a lot of damage as anybody comes around that cubby. If they don't get a flash onto him, if they do not get any kind of stun, they will get shot on and put down very quick, fast, and in a hurry. There's the damage out. Won't be able to get anything just yet. Rush, he's full red. He's going to go down on the other side of that hill. One player rotates out to the inside. Going to try to get another kill here. Vexes has gone on a flank here on his Aisha. They get it down onto him. They're see so what Vexes is looking for. This is going to be in Zem in a 1v1 here at the Sea Hill. The longer that Bronny can hold his ground here, the better for the Pioneers it'll be. Inzem played that perfect. Knew the exact route he was going to go. Mr. Crab's opportunity, but that's going to be a Cells who quickly gets in the hill and staves off that part of their elimination. Free respawn for Zaisho. Neutral Hill is going to change hands. So they have a chance here, Colin, to set up two hills to one. The shot grenade just spawning. So that's a little bit more oomph to their defense. We're going to go for the reaction here with two hills to one. Pioneers needing to hold on for about 10 to 15 seconds. Shock will go out trying to stop one player from moving between the T-table and that front cover. Flash answered back. No chance here. This will be Rush. He's front side of that hill. Inzem will go down. Quick little revive out of him. They're going to get the double shot on yet again. Here comes another flash. Two to one hill advantage still in favor of the Pioneers. They are on the doorstep of possibly another victory to go up three to one. Rise just simply needs a decap or some kind of neutralization or a handle stuck in that cubby corner. Inzem, big shots onto him. Acel shuts him down. Meat shield out. Rushies will trade out with him. Detox down in the middle of the map. Very important final fight here. The 1v1 on the opposite side is breaking out as the Vexies has the retro in hand. Damage done. Looking for the last and final shot. Full red. Zaisho wins it. B Hill under contestation in the final few moments of the round. Will the win condition switch on over and it does. Pioneers, they go up three to one in our map three. On, this is where I begin to get a little bit more concerned because three straight chances there where they're able to kind of set up, do a little something, but they're just getting shut down left, right, and center every single time. They're taking a step forward. It's the Pioneers who send them three steps back. And this is where I just begin to think a big weapon is needed towards that tank side. Put a sniper down, something to fight for, but it looks like they're going back on over the retro. That instant kill potential is going to be important, and I do believe that's going to cause a little bit of a switch up in their strategy, because instead of Rushies grabbing that bowl top every single time, the retro going to somewhere else, that's going to cause a little bit of a split up like you see off that initial. Rushies will be rolling off to the right-hand side. He might have the only play here at the E-Hill. Detox is that first one. Goes for the second. Won't be able to get it. Bronny just fighting and swinging at the thin air for just a moment. Shot grenade will prevent him from pushing forward for just a moment, but now he's going to join up with a teammate. Rushies will go for the sneak play toward E. Meanwhile, the Pioneers, they get F in their favor, and it looks like Rush will start to rotate back to go for a full retake here. Three players, fourth straight off of respawn. They know it's important. Bronny's going to go down first. It was going to be decap. Multiple players are spot on and they'll run, but they're going to be able to survive for now, Colin. But Rise, they take the hill back, and you can see in your minimap of cells, he's going to get the neutralization on E, and that's going to force Rise to make a decision. Do you continue going forward? Do you backtrack inside to take advantage? And the decision has been made. They want to go after that neutral hill. Rushies will go back to the top side of the E hill. Three players stacked up on this side. Meanwhile, it's going to be a 2v1 to the opposite side of the map. Pioneers will begin to pressure out toward Inzem. Inzem's going to be playing defense. First walking wow. up, Handles will get one now, making sure that he ensures the kill there. Meanwhile, both players from the Pioneers are down and out. They need to get a kill on Inzem. If they want to try to keep this one evened up, they won't be able to do it. Pioneers will be stuck between a rock and a hard place momentarily. They're going to back off of the F hill. This is going to be pretty interesting to see. Simply because as soon as these two players come off of respawn, what decision do they make? Where do they go for their retake potential? One player is going to challenge up toward Rushies. Shuts him down almost instantaneously. Both players from the Pioneers stuck between a rock and a hard place here at the first half neutral hill. They're going to look for this secondary kill. Meanwhile, the Pioneers have their home, and they're looking to get the mid-neutral under their favor just a moment. 
And because of both hills being capped up, they know exactly where the remaining two members are. They know the advantage is theirs on both sides of the map. Eyes get directly into the hill to get the decap to keep the lead intact on their side. Avexi's backtracking. Inzum gets out long before he knows he cannot be the hero in this situation. All he can do is lend a helping hand. And as soon as Avexi's goes down, he continues to go on the run. And that's the trust on the other side of the map. They win that 2v1. They get the hill on back. So it's only a matter of surviving, which Inzum cannot. Inzum goes down. Hill for hill still being traded out. Pioneers. They're going to have to hold on to this for quite some time, I believe, 45 seconds. I think the closer they get down to the 20-second marker, it'll force Rise into a bad situation here. Rush, he's on one side of the map. We'll be trying to challenge out opposite side of the map. We have three players from Rise challenging right across the middle of the map. Look at Detox trying to come through the very center lane, trying to be sneaky, sneaky on the flank. Rushies will get shot with three Boltox, get taken down. And Detox's flank was picture perfect. There is the kill, ensuring no decap comes through. Back A by Bronny doesn't connect. Now challenging up against the Vexies. The Vexies will shut him down. F Hill stays in control of Rise. The Cells has moved over here. They're going to have to get a decap three. at F, I believe. Yeah, they need all three. They need a triple neutralization right now, and Cells is just trying to set themselves up for a possible domination towards the back end. But three players lined up, ready for defense. Rushies, he somehow gets the high ground behind another player. He's playing safe to waste time. Cells has his work cut out for him. He goes down, and because of that, Rise is going to be able to hold on to this round and get it into their control. Two to three, slowly but surely trying to chop down the lead and close out these rounds. It shows that they're not letting up off the gas that can pose is still at an all-time high. Good job there. Great round by Rise. Way to trade out hills. Way to go back and forth and trade blows. Trade that momentum back and forth between you and your opponent. Retro placed down here by Rise. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of Cells, will go ahead and rank that bad boy on up to a retro themselves. Shock for no. Oh, goodness gracious. We got the long shot, Jacob. Only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time here. We're going to see a big weapon go down. Something to really put the focus on between these two teams. And that's why you're going to see all, I do believe at least, all four members end up on that side of the map. Cells is just taking a detour to make sure they have that extra bit of utility. But this is where the war is going to break out. Etox trying to lead the charge. Well plays Flash towards the outside. Smokes, incense, everything going off. Zinzum, he starts us off with a double kill. Flying towards the backside. Rushies gets number three. They're already putting toes to hills to try to get the triple cap domination. And if Vexies wins that one, that could be it. As long as everybody does their job. But there might be one last chance. Brawny's eyes show. The choice is theirs. How they want to make the play happen. They get the reset and the down onto Detox. They will survive. But they still have to find a way to thrive. One missed shot there by Enzem could have been the uh, turning point to finish off this round and make it 3-3 three to three going into that round number 7. Now we have Bronny looking across the middle of the map. Big body shot there. We'll get the first down. It looks like he's going to stay up top. Rush is going to get the finish there with the Lancer. 4v3 on the map right now. Vexy's with that retro. Gets the down, and now Inzem will be able to push back up. Now that they've got all the momentum on their side in this round, they are just taking fight after fight. They're going to take every advantage possible. Little misstep there as he tries to hop the drop, and he'll go down. Handles inside of the E-Hill. Tries to get something to go. He's going to be taken down, and he will not get any opportunity for a comeback. Smokes are out now. See if they come through with another retake here. Enzem will jump to the top side of that ramp. Still has a few shots left in his long shot, but it is a tough sled from the forward motion of this map now. For the rest of the time, we've got this one. Rise should have the momentum simply because of how much the point differential has been made by. Well, headshot here would be perfect to slowing down. It handles, quickly goes over his head. Ronnie knows the sniper's still a threat on the other side, but I do believe that's Detox with a pack of punch Boltok in his hands, ready to kind of dish out the damage. They retreat off the neutral because they know a move is being made on the other side of the map. Acelz is trying to retreat far enough because he knows Zaisho's help is on the way. He gets there just in the nick of time to get the stop and the down onto Inzum. The elimination is going to be picked up, but the damage is dealing out. The revives are a must, and they are going to be able to get them off, especially with Brawny, the third player, threatening into the mix. Avexis gets trapped out. No help is on the way, but Detox is there to shut down one the trades continue to go back and forth but the pioneers know they need a triple neutralization colin that was a good little shot hold by detox now the incendiary comes out doesn't get the first one but the trade is killed out Rushies will have an incredible angle here with the retro he's going to finish off his teammate to make sure that he comes back off a of respawn as fast as humanly possible not a lot of time to work with it'll come down to one final push by the pioneers in them looking toward handles flash grenade out 
And Zem backs all the way, hits a big body shot there. He gets angled out just a moment. Still adding in shots. This might be Rush. He's challenging up on the handles. He gets the kill on the handles as well, and that could be and should be the round. Everybody else with the Pioneers, they go into a little bit of a panic mode. They get shut down. This one is tied up, Jacob. Three to three, going into round number seven here. Map number three. Yeah, I'm talking about a few rounds ago. They had to stop the bleeding. They definitely did that and some. They shut down the momentum that the Pioneers was able to build, and they start building it on their own. But I talk about composure and confidence have to be at an all-time high. You gotta be able to balance it. You can't get overconfident in these situations, especially against the defending champs. And that's why affinity of all people is so important to keep their emotions, to keep them a level-headed throughout the course of this match. Round seven. Everything all knotted up here. Chance to take the lead in this Losers of Finals series. Everybody rolling off the spawn. It looks like once again, we will have a big team fight here toward the long shot. Meanwhile, it looks like Rush is going to go for a little bit of a flank angle here. Will he get called out? He's going to hop the drop. One player waiting in the wings. That's going to be a big body shot on him. He hits the secondary shot. He gets the down. He steps up over the cover. Snub out, gets the kill. Now it's 4v3 on the map. M more downs coming through. More kills coming through. One more player left alive over here. It's cells trying to go God mode. Isn't going to be able to do it. He'll go down. Ronnie on the flank throws the incendiary. Not going to find any kill there onto Rushies, but will force him to the backside of that set of luggage. And now Detox will rotate over to try to help out the E-Hill. All that's happening. Handles is rotating fresh off. Three spawn as well, but Detox from downtown is going to alleviate pressure. And that makes the cells have to go for the hill instead of helping the other side of the map. So that gives them another advantage. A 3v2. Make it 3v1 as Brawny goes down. He's going to fall. Handles trying to be sneaky to catch somebody off guard, but how long can it last? Long enough! And he saves Brawny! Handle makes the play, and that's why we call him Shawnee the Menace. Looking to try to take over the F-Hill now. As Cells will be there for the D-Cap. Looking to try to finish off a triple cap. Domination to tie. Go ahead in 4-3 fashion. Will step out. Make sure that he doesn't get shot on immediately. Zaisho on the flank. Sees the miss roll. Gets the shot on for the chunk. Rushies now all by his lonesome. All the horses in the stable at the F-Hill. Triple cap domination ensues. 4-3. One round away from a 2-1 map count lead over Rise. Back and forth, Colin. Back and forth. Like watching a tennis match. Neither one of these guys wanting to give up that fault, wanting to let it go out of bounds. This is where it's going to be important. They're going to have to answer back. That one's going to be upgraded to a retro. But on the other side of things, they have that extra pick, which is either going to be a disable or they're forced to put a big weapon on the map, which it looks like they're going towards the top side for a moment, but maybe taking out the instant kill potential in the form of those incense. And if they do win, it only goes to a round number nine. Coming into round eight here. Rise needed to stay alive in this map three. Fight at the tank is about to break out to the backside of the tank. One player, that'll be Handles. Two more players, four Pioneers. Perfect shock thrown. Handles is down. Another down has ensued. Acells once again trying to go God mode, trying to trade out one kill. Does indeed get one. E-Hill will be solidified by Brawny for now. But Detox, once again, has the long shot early in this round. Rise, once again, has the early advantage, the early momentum. And they retake it yet again. Will it be another possible retake from the side of the Pioneers? Since they're out, got the mark, and they got the connection onto Acelles through the smoke. He didn't even see that one coming. Next target's going to be spotted out. That's in the form of Zaisho. Ends him trying to get the angle. He goes down one by one. The players of the Pioneers continue to fall. And on the other side of the map, Bronny's just inching himself closer little by little. But I think with this rotation, he is going to be spotted out. But how quick can handles get there? And I know they're going to be forced to wait for Zaisho to get in position. So that way they can attack at two fronts. Detox looking to the front side. Bronny's been marked. Any shot onto him will put him down, and there it is. There goes the downing shot. I'm not sure he did indeed. Detox used another long shot shot. Down onto him. Acells bounces down to the bottom. He's full red now. Acells trying to roll back toward the safety of his home hill. Detox has used that long shot to perfection here. He has really just used it for the downs, for the body shots, for the attempted chance to keep his team in it. 
Double down here on the Zysho. Players coming off of respawn for the Pioneers. One after the next. First flash grenade in. Will make them drop that meat shield. Steps in for the reset. Rotates back to the backside of that pillar. Detox misses that shot. Now pulls the long shot. Now pulls the Nasher out. Big body shot there. Trying to trade out yet again. Brani goes down. Meat shield in. Another attempted triple cap domination for Rise. One more player left to take down. That's going to be Zysho. They're in the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, back and forth we go. Four to four, round number nine for the opportunity to go up two to one in this series. Couldn't ask for a better matchup. XC's going off, Zai Show going off. On the respective rosters, 28,000, 27,000. Detox slowly but surely following up as well. Everybody doing their part, but the frag grenades are gonna go down towards the neutral side of the map. Rise realistically had no choice because of what already happened. They used their block early on, but now Acel is already looking like he's gonna take away that instant kill potential call, and round number nine is about to be underway. Remember your training. Locks out of both squads as well. Only one set of utilities for both squads to use in this matchup, in this round number nine. Arise will go over toward the E-Hill. It's gonna be a 2v1 that side of the map, this side of the map. It'll be a 3v2 in favor of Rise. Rushies is full red. He's going to go down. Will they pick up the kill? They are indeed going to pick it up. And another kill comes through. Nades picked up by Brawny, as a matter of fact. And the Pioneers are off to the races. It looks like they're trying to ensure some domination. Yeah, they caught a Vexy's out in the middle. They're bleeding him out. Doesn't matter how hard Detox is trying. He needs to buy a massive amount of time. And I like Handel's decision to back off of the hill. It's not the moment for the triple cap domination as there's still fights to be won around the map. Ends him over steps. He's trying to even it up. But now it's all up to Rushies. The pressure is on. He gets taken down. Fresh off the respawn. Avexis once more has to get the decap and more. As the flash goes out, he's going to get the reset. But he instantly goes down. It's up to Detox. He gets stunned out. But he's going to be able to survive. He's buying some time. The Reinforcements are there, but he falls along with Inzum. I think that one is going to be the one, the final nail in the coffin. The Pioneers will close out map number three and take the go-ahead lead in the series two to one. Incredible map three, incredible matchup thus far. Pioneers rise, giving it everything they've got. Every best foot forward. But on the backs of a single misstep, Jacob, we said before this matchup began, this thing comes down to inches, comes down to one fight. The first time that Rise does not put all four players at the tank. They send one player to E. Pioneers read them like a book, like a Sunday morning new paper boy. They get the two to one kill on the rushies. They get the nades and then the secondary pickup kill right there with those incendiaries shuts them down in round nine puts rise so far back on the back foot rise now finds themselves in a position. They have to win back to back maps to beat the pioneers for a chance to face a United. It's crazy to think about that we're going this far and both of these teams are honestly being tested, but I give all the credit in the world, even though they lost that map, that rise, they're not going down. It shows that they have the passion and the willpower to keep on going against the defending champions who have that chip on their shoulder. Losing to United early on was not fun, especially in the fashion that it happened. They're ready and waiting for another opportunity at that, but they have to earn it. So going into this next map on District, I'd still believe Rise has a chance. And, and honestly, I think it's going to be one of the best chances they have going on to District Control. They have to start out of the gate early, though. They get themselves an early lead, but not necessarily needed to get the early point lead they have to start winning these battles and shut down the confidence of the pioneers a ton of highlights ladies and gentlemen you're gonna get to see each and every one of them here in a beautiful replay package but one of the things you need to note you're gonna see a ton of highlights from both squads both teams you don't get just a regular round nine out of the pioneers and rise you don't just get Ho hum, I'll take a round, you take a round. These men gave us, I would say, seven of the best escalation Vascar rounds I've ever seen coming down Amen. to the wire. 
in so many instances. One fight here, one retake there, one headshot, one double kill. Players going above and beyond, losing their absolute mind. Appreciate the greatness standing and playing in front of you right now. This is incredible Gears 5 action. And sometimes you can just raise the roof like your main man handles right there. This is just a menace. That's why he got the nickname of Cells as well. But Detox vex every single one of these players in the lobby, their coaches as well. They're just proven that they're some of the best in the business time and time again. And that's why I strongly believe that if Ryze is able to win that first initial fight on the hill, they're gonna be able to get the maximum amount of points off of it. And then if they win that second team fight on rotation, they are gonna be able to get themselves maybe an 80 to 10 lead, 80 12. But it all boils down to that beginning fight. If Ryze does not win it and Pioneers continues to remain in control on district, I think we might see it. I think we might have to call it. I mean, this is this is going to be interesting because I really do that cinema fight for me. That initial cinema fight, I, I think we might have, excluding E United. I don't even think the Pioneers are in the same class. Don't take that offensively. I don't think the Pioneers are as good at that initial cinema fight than the three teams left in this tournament. Every time I see District, whether it be Pioneers, Rise, or E United. Those boys love getting in the back of the cinema, love that initial fight back there. It is impeccable to see how great they are at it. And that's the very first fight we're going to get treated to. And we're going to get to see it time and time again because you've got a set of nades that spawn up. You got the drop shot. You got a ton of things to fight over through that mid neutral lane. And that mid neutral lane grants you the verticality on the map, the ability to put pressure from multiple angles. I mean, we, we've been blessed here this weekend with some top tier gameplay. I know a lot of people were a little disappointed with pool play because it goes chalk, but then we get into bracket play and it, it has been unbelievable from start to finish. I may have gone to church this morning, but I've been blessed with a miracle this afternoon. This has been great. Yeah, honestly, these are some of the matches that we want united in the winner's finals. I don't think many people, actually, no, many people could have guessed that one, Ashes in particular. But honestly, for Rise, I, like I keep saying, I, I keep giving them credit, not shutting down like I, I thought they would, honestly, in this series, because a lot of these rounds, they're just unable to kind of close them out when they do have a lead, when they do have the advantages. But with kind of the closing out district control, like I said, I think that's going to start the pace. If they can build some momentum, I think that'll give them a definitive edge on map number five. As I look down, it is going to be Clock Tower because of Affinity. And I think Affinity deserves so much credit once they go on over that Clock Tower map, because even though I talk about it on Clock Tower, Rush easily in the charge if he goes down low, I think we're going to see something completely different. But that's neither here nor there. And I'm going to talk about Affinity once more, because that man deserves all the praise in the world. Because one of the biggest things I think he's going to bring to this roster on this district map is the ability to kind of help control those power weapons, time them, figure out when and where you're going to wait for them. Do you push forward? Do you get the elims? Do you disperse him? Just like the four players on the battlefield are definitely going to have their hands full. I look at the opposite end too. I think one of the most underspoken and one of the most soft spoken gentlemen I've had the chance to, to hang around with chop shop with when it comes to their team is the head coach of the pioneers, uh, sleepy to me, formerly Bebo, everybody, he, he switched up his, he switched up. He's, he's trying to make sure that time. he get, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no not <laughs> sleepy time. He switched up. He was Bebo. He switched everything on over. He's going for the marketing part. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't mind him and I don't fault him for that. But sleepy and I have spent a lot of time chit chatting off on, off on whether we play in ranked games, whether we're playing, you know, whether I'm just in the discord chit chatting with him. He's extraordinarily eloquent. And one of the things that I think he's done pretty much better than anybody with this squad is I think he keeps their head pretty, pretty screwed on straight. He does not allow these guys to get too big of an ego. He doesn't let these guys get too big for their britches. They simply just see and, and feel just an incredible amount of humble pie from that man. And I think that's one of the best things he can do for them. <sighs> Colin, you did it again. What's that? You mentioned pie. You mentioned food. Now I want to go get a pie. What kind of pie? Oh, I like apple pie. I love apple pie. A fresh made apple pie has to be the most delicious pie out there. Besides maybe pumpkin during Thanksgiving.
Is it Pe voice of God? I'm gonna ask Jacob. Is it is it pecan or is it pecan, Jacob? Depends how I'm feeling on the day because I like to be flexible and switch up. At a moment's <laughs> notice, and Ride's gonna have to be flexible here as Detox gets first blood. Rushy's trying to get deep into that spot and try to hold it down because he knows help is certainly there in the form of Avexes. They're chopping him down shot by shot, making him second guess the decision to try to enter the hill. They're gonna be able to stave it off for now, but ends him in a 1v2 situation. He gets one, he goes back to back as he takes out handles as well, and he gets a prize in the form of a drop shot. Let's see what the next retake is here. Ooh, Detox ooh. goes down with the drop. I was, I was starting to stutter because I was like, are they going to get this kill on the Detox? Rise, they not only get that initial hill capture for a lot of those five. early points. Okay, my man's already said it. We're going map five. I'm feeling it. Today's the day, Colin. We're going 14 straight maps between losers and, and grand finals. Inzem, bottom side of the map, will rotate over toward P2. He's gonna look to try to help out a teammate. Zaisho, full red right here. Shot on, big body shot by Zaisho, trying to answer back, but there's the help from Ryze. Ryze already coming through the top side of the map. Inzem, he's gonna possibly get shot over the top, goes to the back A, won't be able to get that one. He rotates up with the Rushies. Does Detox still have, no, he doesn't, I don't think I see it. No, Detox does not still have the drop. This is gonna be an interesting fact because Ryze is now on the hunt. They're coming from the opposite side. Looks like Ryze is gonna get shut down from the opposite middle end, but they're gonna get kills here. Everybody crawling around. Everybody need to get kills here. Zaisho's got to go absolutely massive if he wants to try to save this. Zaisho has to get maybe one more kill. Back A central from Avexis. Another kill comes through. Up over 60 points and counting to Pioneers. Not even touching the board. What did I say? 80-10. I was generous giving them that 10 points. But Detox, you talk about the drop shot in his hands. It was a blessing. It was a miracle because the amount of damage he put in from Juice with that Lancer was really the chance changing factor the tides that won them that battle as the he hides down low first shots can be fired off flashes left right and center followed by a shock with rise still crowning standing tall once again shutting down the pioneers at every portion every single turn and again they're going to be first to the punch could this be three consecutive shutout hills only time will tell with 30 seconds left on the former Detox just outside of the juice will drop the flash in front of him to try to stun out one player. Rushes with another big back A, gets the kill there. Up over 100 points. You said 80 to 10. Let's try 110 to 0 because they're going to get to 104 and counting. This is actually pretty interesting. Look at the way Rise is shutting down inside of the juice and they're going to continue to move on. Handles is down inside of the cinema. New drop, fully respawning out. 35 seconds on that shot grenade. Rise already into the next hill, into that next position. 115, there goes the hill, there's the two points, there's the three points, there's the four. Count it up, chopping away at it. 110 point differential, Jacob. I, I, I sensed, I sensed something in the water on the side of Rise. Didn't really sense it was gonna be this bad, but Rushies gets picked off towards the low potion. That gives them something to work with on the side of the Pioneers, but adjustments are being made. They're finally pushing in, drop shot is out. Inzum gets taken down along with the cells, unfortunately, but if X sees, that's going to be a big shot, but he gets taken down over the top by Brawny. That gives Pioneers something to work with. 50 total points up for grabs here, but how many can they hold on to? See what Zaisho's doing. Checking the bottom side of the map, checking around, making sure nobody's coming from the bottom side of that stairwell. Cells is going to be in this spawn all by his lonesome here. Just being a menace, keeping two players out of the fight for Rise. Lancer fire has been pure. He's gonna drop one flash at his feet, try to get the stun out. He's gonna get that stun to go, trying to just stay alive. If he can get this double kill right here, I might just have to walk away and take a breath, but he's gonna go down without getting either one of them. Zaisho, he's gonna go down as well. Bronny in for the revive, big body shots on by Inzem. They'll get at least one kill here as well. Four to two on the map right now. Leaving the hill is the Pioneers, 129 to 49. With about 12 seconds left on this hill. See, these eliminations are crucial because this is what the Pioneers do. They catch you on rotation as Bronny continues to stagger out multiple players of a rise as you see them setting their eyes on that ground position. But Incense is going to get dropped. Rush, he's forced to revive out. You can see it in your mini-map. They're slowly but converging on these players. The cell's going in, but he gets taken down by Rushkies. They're still buying time, holding on to the defensive end. And that time's going to be bought and some because it alleviates the pressure. Avexis gets the drop shot, and once more, Rise will control the majority of this hill. Enemy spotted! Avexis, uh -oh. bottom side of the map, looking forward here. 
Drop shot in hand, reload out. 145 and counting. Drop shot onto Zaisho. Will get the kill onto him. Three players versus the one in that cubby corner. No kill comes through for a cells. And now Pioneers are set up once again. They're going to have to set back and wait for the respawns before they go for yet another retake. Every time it seems like they're getting set up, somebody from Rise is there to shut it down. Talk shut down one that gives a trade, but he called out how many other players were there. So the information is going to go over. You can see it so much in your mini map that Rise is reacting. The little arrows showing where the targets are being focused at is Detox trying to watch the middle. Rushy's nose, a player's towards the backside in the form of handles. He's weak. He smells it, blood in the water. And Rushy's like Jaws is going to strike as Rise continues to accumulate the points and catching out the pioneers. Elim after Elim. Acel's now trying to get aggressive. A down onto one. He makes it happen that's gonna be an elimination but rushes is there once more to save the day with a halo shining bright above his head 186 to 52 you see the pioneers trying to get inside of the hill first one player inside of the spawn is gonna get down that's gonna be brawny they're going out for the quick little rotation going for the 45 full red is Zaisho shot over the top trying to add out some damage trying to keep the lanes clogged up as that smoke grenade in Zem will come in through the front door of gets the down on Zaisho Zaisho is gonna get cleaned up with, the, with that Lancer now they're just outside toward the cinema. Rise is not giving them any room to breathe here. He went from a 110 to now a 130 point differential. And even further, 140 and counting, Jacob. You can already see, as soon as they get the information about players going left, right, and center, they're going to strike, try to converge, take advantage of their numbers. But Zaisho with the perfect flank. The hill changes hand. That high ground is going to go over to him as the Pioneers now getting aggressive. Not only do they get the elimination, but they're able to turn and get the revive as well while simultaneously wasting the drop shot. Detox comes up short, but the survival is a must on the side of Rise because they cannot get to ANSI. They're only 92 points away. They have multiple opportunities here throughout the course of this game to slow things down when they have to. 181, 82 keeps on counting up. They've got a few more moments, 20 seconds or so on this hill. You can see Rise coming through the info, trying to set up for this next hill. Getting some Lancer damage on. Zaisho looking to try to trade out downs, trade out blows, trying to put the damage on to multiple players. There's a third down and out for one. Now's handles with a snub, trying to put out the damage for the respawn and the revive. Two down. Now looking to get a third. Two more players left in this area. Still alive. Zaisho with a third down and out on another one. Rushies waste the shot grenade, but oh, wait in the wings. Detox with the side swipe of the clothesline. He was the only one down there, but now he gets the reinforcements he needs, making sure he calls out one player on the left, spots out handles, even shooting to make sure that he's peppered up before he begins to move forward. A third player and Bronny even gets spotted out in the juice. There goes a 3v3 on one side of the map, but you can see Zaisho has some different plans set out. He's trying to wait for somebody to rotate on over, make a mistake, and leave a window open that he can climb through. Maybe looking for another retake attempt here. What is going to be seen through the middle of the map? One player at the bottom there. Neutralization in 214 to 99. The boys from the Pioneers need a ton of time on a single hill or two just to get this close again. 49 seconds and counting. Rotating into the bandstand. This is a big 1v1 here. Zaicho can win this. He can definitely give himself some help. Kill is in. Now Inzem has to be worried about the 6 o'clock, getting shots onto these players stuck inside that lobby. Now you see what Detox is going to have to do, push up to try to help out his teammates. You see them rotating back. All three players from Rise inside of the hill, getting Lancer out, getting shot on very quickly, very early. Inzem throws the shock to the top. That might shut down the retake attempt from the Pioneers. Downs left, right, and center. Kill's coming through. And only 30 seconds left on this hill. Could get it to 130 to 220, but it's still a 90-point differential. Rushies gets away with the new drop shot as well. Next hill is inside of the cinema. That is dangerous sledding. Double kill time. No, only one. Gets used to that a drop shot for now. Next hill will be inside of the cinema with three players from Rise already inside. And Rushies has, oh, he spawns right there. I was going to say a chance to go ahead and make a flank happen. With that spawn shield, he's immediately trying to put it to use, and he uses it to perfection along with the help of Avexis. But Brawny goes and knows the flank is open. He opens the door, gets that elimination onto Detox. Acelles continues to fall. 3v3 is going to roll out here with Handles and the Pioneers. The position on the cinema. Shots continue to reign supreme with the damage over the top is getting down. Rise gets taken down. Avexis fall. The flank that I thought Rushies was going to have was stolen away 
by Acelles as he cements the down. This elimination onto Detox is going to be a full-on squad wipe on the form of the Pioneers, Colin. But Rise still needs to stay composed. Like I said, they have such a massive lead. They can go ahead and give up these few seconds to start to go ahead and formulate a plan. Ronnie looking over to the right side. Sees Rushy's in front of him. 80 point differential now. Finally not getting 100 point club. Three players rolling in. Three players on that right hand side of the hill. If you are in the hill looking out, left hand side of your mini map. Handles up top. We'll try to make sure he doesn't get flashed out. Sees that first player, tries to hit some big L triggers. They finally get one down. There's the revive, but there's the kills. One more attempted little back A onto Rushy's. He'll get caught. Now Rushy's goes for the ramp. Won't be able to get the first one. He's full red. He goes down. Avexi's last alive for his squad. He's going to get pressured out here by multiple players, and it looks like the Pioneers are trying to get set up into a position for the next hill for P2. Big body shot by Bronny. Gets him to miss. Tries to go for another one. He actually gets a trade! Holy moly! While that trade's happening, Vexi's got downed out, left to drive, drop shot coming up, and you already see that's a focus of Detox. He knows this one cannot go over towards the Pioneers for free, especially with the momentum they've been building. Just a couple of shots. Handle's going to be able to get out alive, and that's a decision that Rise might regret in a few seconds. Now we're going to see the shots on. Avexis will push forward here. Gets the shots toward Brawny. New Hill will spawn at the bottom side of the map, but they've got to be able to stop these players inside of the juice. They get one down. Now they can get into the neutralization position without having to be too concerned. Wasted drop shot onto Avexis toward the top side of the map, and now Avexis is going to try to rotate straight toward in the juice. Inzem's going to go down from the 45. Shot over the top. Ruxies won't be able to get that down. He's full red. Goes for the revive. Gets it off as well. And now they're going to push back into this hill. Down from a cells. Looking to try to get two or three more here. Might pull the snub. No, they're going to stay here with the Nashers. Stay in the CQC. Shot over the top. Beautiful job there. Lining up the blindy. And we are down to a 30-point differential, Jacob. Pioneers have roared back into this one. They are trying to make it interesting. Yeah, they roared back and some. They're going to be able to take the lead if they get the majority of the time left on this hill. And this is where I need to see Rise show the composure that I thought they would have as they had such a massive lead early on. Double flashes, target onto Brawny. Rushy's going to open up that one with an elimination as they continue to move forward. Eyes set on the prize at the end of the day as a cell is going to be dropped, but the hill is going to remain contested because of Handles, who's trying to hold his ground. Has some shots, putting in the work. The downs are there. The eliminations are soon to follow at the Pioneers will be able to hold the ground. Ten toes down, but Inzum not letting up off the trigger. The Lancer reigning supreme. Downs being forced out. Revives from both teams. This fight's going to continue. But no, he finally goes down. Rushies is out. They're fighting only 16 seconds here. And I think Inzum done a fantastic job to keep it contested. Now it's the Detox. Detox trying to fight into P3 here. Top ATM, top left-hand side of your minimap. Avex, he sees two players out in front of him through the info. They've got one player inside of the hill. That's going to be Rushy. Zysho has pushed through the middle of the map here. Flash out toward Avexis. Avexis is going to drop one of his own, trying to stun out the players, the Pioneers. Three players in. Three players now get the kill onto him. Zysho in the middle of the map being challenged out by two. The drop shot should go over to the side of Rise. One player in the area. This is going to be Detox hopping up into the info to challenge out toward Cells. Body shot missed. Another wrap shot coming in. Not enough to get the down of the kill. Inzem will take the drop shot to the bottom side of the map. The Pioneers have control over the hill, and they may very well get this to be a tie ball game before you know it. Avexis being challenged on the opposite side of the map. I want to take a look here real quick. Can we go on to Inzem? Find out what that drop shot is doing. There we go. I want to see where he's rotating it to. Because this is a lot of points for them to be giving up. Oh, is he forced the drop shot out. Inzem almost wasted it. Zaisho finally gets taken down. Detox goes down as well, but they only have a few more seconds with this man advantage. And look at that beautiful spawn from Zaisho. That's an instant flank. That's exactly where all the players are going to begin to funnel into. That damage is raining supreme. Flashes on the handles. He drops into a shock. He goes down. Now it's all up to Brawny to try to finish him off, but he falls as well. A cell's doing what he can, but no, it's actually Brawny still alive. A couple of eliminations are being picked up. Arise are going to be the ones being awarded with scrap time. Just a few seconds because now they have to go as they take. Take the lead on back. Bottom side of the map already. One player from the Pioneers, now two, inside of the hill. They're going to jump out of here with a few seconds left to try to give them enough time for a retake. Middle of the map, Zaisho goes down inside of the juice. Rushies will continue his reign of terror here to the bottom side of the hill, looking to try to get a shot on to one player. 2v1 on the opposite side. Big body shots there. Big kill by Handles on the Rushies. Will force one player off. 2v2 ensues to the left-hand side of the map. See what Inzem's doing here. Goes to the back A. He's full red. Shot over the top. He goes down. 
Detox will rotate back here, trying to make sure that he doesn't get shot on. Most of the Rise players are on this side of the map. One Rise player on the right side has gone down, which has opened up the hill for the Pioneers to get inside of it. This will be Rushies challenging toward the middle of the map. Zaisho jumps up inside of the juice. Rushies has him full red. Inzem gets a big win inside of the bandstand. Meanwhile, the flash from the middle of the map. Bronny bounces around, not enough. They got plenty of time to win it off of this one, Jacob. This is going to come down to just a few moments. A few moments for 30 seconds left. It almost feels like an eternity on the side of the Pioneers to try to break through. Rushy's just distracting players on the north portion of the map, and that's his cells who's seemingly taking the bait. Handles trying to help, but they know they have to go. The hill is what's important here in this situation as the downs are coming through. Zaisho is unable to put that drop shot to use. 11 seconds left call, and Avexi's going to fall. They have a chance to keep it contested on the side of the Pioneers. Bra Enzem has not died since that last drop pick. He finally goes down. He's going to get taken out. 20 seconds gets them within closing distance of this map, but not a victory. Rise will need only 11 seconds. Two players from Rise up toward the Pergola. Two players up toward the Cinema. Avexis and Enzem will trust in from the front side. Meanwhile, back at the Planter, at the Garden, Zaisho is going to have to fend off against two. Two more players from Rise in the area. They're going to rotate early. Detox goes down. Nobody in the area for the cleanup. Rise inside of the hill. They have gotten off that last hill, giving them enough time to try to go for the retake here, Jacob. And yeah, they know they have no time. Aselge is going wide to try to spread out the defense, but it's only 11 seconds. They have to move in, particularly Brawny and Handles from the low side. An adjustment's being made from Zaisho, but time is ticking and it's not in their favor. The contestation comes in. Aselge, Zaisho from the low side, and that's all they have as two more players go down. Make it three total. Zaisho has his hands full. He's going to fall, and so are the Pioneers. Rise. They are able to hold on to their lead, take the map, and bring us to a game number five. But the big question is here, Colin, who holds on to the momentum? Who has the advantage for map number five, Clock Tower? Thankfully for everybody at home, you don't have to wait long because after this quick commercial break, we're going to see the conclusion of our losers bracket finals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the finality of our lower bracket. It is two to two. Both teams putting their best foot forward and Jacob, a map five clock tower. I'm not going to say that you was right because you said it like minute 37 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like less than a minute. You said it like 37 seconds in a round. <laughs> I'm sure that was a heck of a lot closer than you expected it to be after 110 to 4. If Rise lost that map, I was about to leave and bring back in T-Square. And I call him T-Square because Toby and Taylor do a fantastic job. And they were going to be needed because I would have been deflated. Because I believe Rise, they have the potential. They've shown that they are one of the greatest teams in Gears. But they have to prove it on the grandest stage of them all. But in order to get to that grand finals, they have to continue their momentum. They have to win that map number five, which is not going to be an easy one on Clock Tower. It's going to be pretty interesting because, Jacob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I would say E United, I, I need the stat in front of me. I need to open up that stat sheet. I know a lot of y'all live by the stats, and sometimes I just live by the hype of the moment. Pioneers beating E United earlier on Clock Tower gives me a ton of cause to pause for this next map for them. I want to say yes, right? But I, I think... Rise, it's just different. It's not a one for one. It's apples to oranges. Both are good. Both are healthy. They're just different, right? I, I think E United has that that bully mentality. They want to go up top and be aggressive and fight fire with fire against the pioneers. Rise just has a little bit more depth when it comes to strategy. But I do think they're going to be able to switch it up a little bit more than that E United roster did in that last matchup. So I do think the pioneers have to be ready for anything under the sun. Anything under the sun and probably anything further than the sun right now. I mean, solar systems have got to be prepared for 14-point differential there in that last district. I mean, down 110 to 4 and to only lose by 14 points with it being first to 300 is just an astronomical comeback by the Pioneers. It just falls short. Ashes on our analyst desk said earlier, we got to see if they have the gusto. 
because they are a championship caliber team. They just won our last championship. Do they got the gusto, the machismo? All right. Do they have the macho madness? Because they they haven't been here in quite some time. Jacob ain't been on the brink of elimination in what feels like forever. They come to a map five. Long shot up top, nays down low, torque inside of the truck. 11 rounds possible between them and elimination. I hear the voice of God tell me he got stats for me, so I need to hear him real quick. You want to tell him, Jacob? (laughs) You want to tell him? I got to find the words real quick. Is that that's scary. That's a scary thought. Stat line is Rise has zero and zero. They have not played Clock Tower. It's one thing in the regular season and in scrims, but everybody knows the whole hand is dealt during this major. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, the Pioneers five and oh, Colin is letting us know like an animaniac out of the Looney Tunes. Uh oh, there's some danger brewing here in this matchup, but that could be a blessing. That could be a blessing, Colin, because guess what? I talked about the depth of strategy. If they haven't shown what they've been working on, what they planned for the major, that can be the ultimate jack of trades or jack up their sleeves. I messed it up, but right. Ace up your sleeve, jack of all trades, master of none. I'm going to be here whether they're one and done or we got to go until the sun goes down. You and I got to be singing into the night because it's oh so right to have the three best teams and gears left alive in this tournament because jacob mvp r kyle necro clark map five is about to ensue between rise and the pioneers just for a chance to take on e united rolling out of spawn here on the back of the pioneer side of the map you see that beautiful scenic shot here comes rise going straight across the middle of the map brownie with the first big kill on the rush he's down comes through shots are being traded four to three on the map now another down, now another kill, four to two. Two players left alive of Rise, one of them being full red. It's a Vexies. He's going to try to get one more. All down, all dead. Pioneers pick up round one. And the Gusto was a must but they got too aggressive. Rushies, he didn't have that flash that actually stunned towards the secondary, and that was Brawny, the player who was able to get that first blood, because if Rushies gets past Brawny, there's nothing stopping him from taking off that player in the host spot. That was an absolute must when it comes to stoppage. So Rise, I know they're not going to do that same exact thing, even though the chance for aggression is still going to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in around number two here. Let's see if the Rise boys can have a little bit of a difference of opinion. They're going to send Rushies down low. Rushies will pick up those new nades. He's going to throw one up. He might have bounced that back right into his face, but he's going to throw the second one here. Rise detox is full red. He's going to back up to the back pillar. Zysha will pick up the long shot. They're going to start to back up slowly but surely. Detox goes down. Inzem will pick up a kill, though. Now Handles is down. Trading out left, right, and center. Needing to find one more to make it a 2v1. There goes the Vex. He's 1v1. One by his cells. Pioneers go up 2-0. to zero. Once again, I feel like they just knew it. As soon as Rushies was kind of caught, saw down low, they immediately reacted. They flew towards the top side of the map. And that's the thing. Those grenades can only hit a limited amount of spots from the low side. So they know exactly what spots to watch out for. So I feel like Rushies, once again, if he goes down low, needs to save at least one. Bring it back to the team and have a pack a punch weapon. Coming into the next fight, Rise up top. Rushy's down low yet again for the fragmentation grenades. He goes for the pick on him. He's got him now throwing him up top. It looks like a cells and the boys from the Pioneers will push across. A bunch of smoke has been thrown. Rise backed all the way off. They are playing it defensively. This is Brawny trying to stay alive here around the pillars. He's going to get tagged up. He's going to go down. 4-3 on the map now. Rise this time. Instead of going for the nades and then playing into the hands of the Pioneers, they simply play back and play defensively. Another big shot. A double kill from Zysho. The revive is there. Brawny in a cells is trying to answer back. It's going to be a cells. He gets chunked. He only gets the down. Oh my God. I feel like I'm watching Gladiator. Are you guys not entertained from one of the best matches we've had all weekend long between every single team that enters the arena and Zaisho? Such a world star style play against the players of Rise, but once again, Rushies, those grenades, unable. That's four total frags within two rounds that don't get a single elimination. But once again, Rushies is going down low. Let's try it again, folks. 
Round number four here. Everybody throwing out their flashes. Grenades picked up yet again in the hands of Rush. He's a Sells is down early. Zaisha will pick up the long shot. Big body shot there, trying to get the answer back. They're trying to go wide here, trying to find the angle under at least one player. Inzem's going to go down now. Detox is there for the revive. Another shot on it. In in gets him down, gets him dead. This is going to be Rushies and Avexi's last stand. This is their last hope. Goes to the flank. Avexi shut down. Now Rushies goes in. He's headshotted into oblivion. Three to one. Pioneers are three rounds away from making it in to the grand finals. I don't really know what the thought process is. There's probably a lot of commotion going on in the communication as Pioneers rush on over because the rush man himself, 0 oh, in 6 now with those frag grenades. He needs to be able to put him to work just a little bit more because I know the late great prospect would not be proud at the execution in which the weapons are getting. As you see, the attention is being focused once more. A similar strategy as Rushies. Looks like he was going down low, fakes it for a moment, goes up top, gets a couple cross, but this is now where he's going to strike. Goes down low. He gets spotted out, though, Colin. That's going to be the difference. They're going to cross here. Rushies is going to be tagged up a little bit. So is a Cells. They might have him in a little bit of a pinch if he tries to push out. A Zaisho will try to get up into his back pillar area with a teammate. Detox bounces in. Gets missed as he slides around. Dancing around one player. Avexis is down on the opposite end. Bronny goes for the knife onto Rushies. Won't be able to get it. Finally, one kill comes out. A Cells is in a 3v1 situation. He backs up toward his own spawn. And he is in between a rock and a hard place. Detox with the long shot. Cells will have one flash grenade to use to his benefit. This is interesting because Inzem, I mean, Inzem's just waiting in the middle of the map. He said, boy, you better, I dare you to chump out. I dare you. Rise isn't going to make a move forward. Affinity's in their ear right now just saying, wait, wait. Just wait for overtime. There's no reason to even give him a chance. Because you know he's the walking multi-kill. You know he's going to at least get two if they do give him a fight. So they're just waiting for overtime. So this is going to slow down a little bit, Colin, just to just kind of give you a, a little warning. Taking a look at what a cell's prospects are here, Jacob. Maybe flash toward the long shot, try to get up into his face, try to make him miss. He knows there's no chance. He knows there's no chance. <laughs> he, he he absolutely knows it. He's like, I'm not. I'm, you're not going to be able to kill. You might win the round, but you're not going to kill me. You have to work to get this kill. And I, and I respect it honestly. Uh, not too too much. I would like to see a cell's at least attempt it. But his team is putting up a good fight. That's what I'm saying. This is the biggest difference to kind of correlate what I was talking about yesterday. I like it, though. Honestly, I like it. They're not overstressing themselves. They're not using gas when they don't need to. Because that's exactly what's going on in the economy. If you use gas when you don't need to, you're going to have to fill up. You're going to get hit with a 50 or more dollar fill up, though. Looking for the next play here. For the cock. Rolling out of spawn, round number six here. Looking to be able to get a, a big set of kills, a big set of slays. Pushing up into this benefactor. Ru Detox will go for the Lancer across to the back pillar. Vexies as well. Rushies will go for the nades yet again. Full red. Not going to go down. Will get them off here eventually. Nades to the back. This time he brought them all the way into the fight. Is that 0 and 8? I do believe that's 0 and 8 with frag nades. This time around he did bring it back. That was a much better effort. The flashes are being countered. Rushy's trying to hold his ground in towards the jail. Damage is being dished out, but the eliminations are not cleaned up just yet. Great revives out of the KCP roster to try to stay alive, but they need to figure out how to thrive in the situation, which they cannot rise to perfection. Work as a team to tie this up. I'm surprised Zaisho did not pull the long shot out there again. Yes, you might get pressured from the other side of the back pillar, but you've got a teammate there with you. If he's looking off into the prison, he might be able to get that body shot, might be able to get a headshot and change the tides of that fight. I, I have no idea if they didn't know that he was there, but they had to have some idea that Rushies had moved up into the prison. If he was in that position to be able to get those shots on from that 45, 90 degree angle toward the back pillar. Coming into round number seven here. Pioneers and Rise. Rushies goes back down for the nades yet again. One player tries to meet him. Goes to the Lancer fire. Is going to get him full red. He's not going to go down yet again. Rushies turns to make sure that he's not getting chased. He is going to bring those nades up. Now Does we he get see. one? I think he saves them. He gets them one. Time. He gets one. This he's going to no, he save though. him. He's saving him for the overtime, though. It, it's going to be one for ten. He's going to get one, one kill with those two frags. And they're going to win the round. I guess. I like to guess. 
Fire in the hole! First one. Here comes one deep. Adversity. Here comes another one deep. They're gonna push those players off a of back pillar. Detox will get the long shot in his hands and starts to rotate with it. Handles will take over this garden. He needs help from the truck. Is not gonna get enough really to get the down. Detox with a missed long shot. Now it's gonna be a 2v1 on to Inzem. Trying to get a secondary kill here. Detox is full red. Quick little revive out onto him. 3v3 into the area. It busted out into a ton of action. Looking for a headshot on his Aisha. Won't hit that one either. Detox will go with the reload yet again. Ooh, baby, this is a dangerous spot for you to be in. Problem here is they're too split up on the side of the... Ooh, the Pioneers. Now they're really split up. It's theirs for the taking on the side of Rise. And that's even if they want to go down low because they know they're separated on two different sides of the map. They just need to converge. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They cut... I was about to say, they make Estelle as a target who gets a trade onto one. That alleviates a little bit of the pressure from Brownie, almost connecting with a headshot as Detox as they slowly but surely begin to move in on this position. New set of frag grenades will be picked up by Inzem as well. He's going to be waiting with those new nades as well. Ronnie will pull back all the way behind that second set of sandbags. Once again, one shot left for the side of Detox. Detox looking to try to get that body shot. Won't be able to get that one. First nade out, second nade out as well. Rotates right back into it. Another round one by Rise. Four to three. My goodness, Jacob. The tide has shifted. The moon has risen. And will the sun set on the Pioneers in this tournament? Two rounds to win for Rise. Three for the Pioneers. Round number eight is underway. Can you imagine the storylines of Rise can take out the Pioneers here, advance to go against E United, and one of the biggest El Clasicos we have in Gears Esports is Rushies returning to the scene of the crime, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, because that's what they've been using to win these multiple rounds in a row. Frag grenades being dished out, Zaisho goes down, he is out as well, Brownie trying to make a rotation as Detox gets taken out as well, he's gonna fall, Handle soon to follow as long as he can make it happen, but it's pressure, it's just too much, Rise now go on map, and series point, Colin, one more round away from that grand finals appearance. They cannot outdo the defensive stand of Rise. Rise is allowing the Pioneers to push across the top, round in and round out. And the Pioneers have no answer for it. They get into an area to try to get a shot on, and then they get killed one after the next. I would not be shocked to see Rise go with a difference of opinion here. Try something different. They're going to send all four, no, three up top. Rushies yet again down low. He's going to be met here. He's going to be full red, looking for this early kill onto him. Sells and handles in the area. Quick little revive. There's the chunk out. Now they're going to pressure across toward the bottom, trying to get shots on. First nade is out. Inzem is going to get caught there. Second one out. Now he's going to try to get another player caught. Gets the kill into a Vex. He's 4v2 on the map. 1v1 toward the bottom side of the nades. Detox will win that fight, but it is 3v1, and he's stuck behind this pillar. Full red. Now full red it again. As he started to get his health back, he goes down. 5 to 4. Still have to be perfect for two or more rounds, Jacob. We go to round number 10. Pioneers looking to tie it up. Rise looking to close it out. What an incredible bottom bracket final. I feel like this is what Rise has been waiting for, that fight down low. Rush, he's round after round. Even though I don't think he's gotten a single elimination with those frag grenades, he's still demanding so much attention. So many players are forced to look at him. Once again, it's handles the cells going down low. Rush, he gets the call. The audible has been made. An all-out push from Rise up top as it might look like they're trying to get the sniper in the hands of Detox. Frag grenades being dished out. Nothing is going to be able to connect, but the handle still is going to be able to hold on to one. And that is the difference maker that the Pioneers have in this round as Detox narrowly misses. I would try to hold on to that frag grenade Same. and force somebody into the overtime hill with it. Rushies has now picked up the torque, so all of the power weapons have gone in favor of Rise. Handles has to throw this pretty succinctly. You have to get somebody toward the back pillar area, up into the sandbags, maybe trying to get damage onto him. Shot out, not missed. Aid goes off. Handles doesn't get any anything to go for it. Another Torque Bow goes flying out here. Torque Bow shot off. Gets the kill as well. 4v3. Pioneers are on the back foot. He doesn't get that kill unless the team is watching there with support fire to get that pre-fire damage to make that splash damage possible. As a Vexi is going around the map collecting everything he can. And this is where the Pioneers have to make the decision or their tournament lives are over. How are you going to break through this defense? Sniper, it looks like it's going to be a play. Yeah, they're going to pick up a new snipe, and they're going to try to get a headshot or two with it. 
I mean, they're going to have to get something to break into this. Detox is going to be waiting with his own long shot here. Rushies will have three bolts left. Overtime Hill, I believe, is behind the car. No, it's in the middle. It's got to be in the middle because it was behind the yeah. car. La no, no. Two rounds ago, it was behind the car. So up top, it's in the very middle. It should be in the very middle, I think. Behind the car again. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Can't Frag count. grenades. Zaisho has to go off. If Zaisho doesn't hit headshots, this is over. Pioneers are going to be eliminated here with seven seconds still overtime. Colin, the pressure is now on. This might even go a little bit more extended because of the fact that nobody really wants to jump up into that hill. Headshot on Abrani. Now Rushies will have his chance to go in. Nobody's there to contest him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Here's Esports presents to you Rise beating the Pioneers in five maps, 10 rounds in map five for just a chance in the grand finals to go against E United. The Pioneers have officially been eliminated. I'm just happy to say, Colin, we are going to have a new champion. E United versus Rise. The El Clasico returns between the two with Powers wanting to claim the, cro the crown as the king of Gears Esports. But Avexis, with all the passion he's had under over the course of the years, Oh, not moments, not weeks, but years. He wants to win the first championship, not only for himself, but to bring it home for Rise as a whole. I believe this is the closest Avexis has gotten since the Invitational at Columbus in Gears 4. No, they, they remember when they... Uh, when was second place? When, when was there? It was MSP, so their oh, last was second MSP, place. Okay. It was a mid-split playoff, not a major. So they come to MSP, they go up against... It goes up, they go up against a different iteration of the same team and they lose on Tomb in a final round. I don't know if you count a mid split playoff as a major, but if you do, that was their last closest attempt. I think prior to that, it was all the way back to that invitational. It was the last time Avexi's had a chance to even get second. I think every other finishing place for him was third or worse. He's got to be chomping at the bit right now. He, he wants this more than he wants to breathe. Like, like we heard Bronny last tournament scream at the top of his lungs he was a champion i don't know if rise finds a way to win this but i do know that if they do i don't think so i don't think a has all of that energy to scream that i don't know if it'll overwhelm him with excitement or if he will break down with just joy because he is a guy that has grinded for this for so unbelievably long so ungodly much he has gone from just a ranked in a wager warrior to a, a amateur player to a pro player adding in content creator on the side okay. of that there's, he, there's one guy on the other side that's very very similar too that's why i think this grand finals is so important because guess what latin america has a chance not to win it as a team but in the form of dyslexic they have a chance to replicate what identis has done years ago this is history in the making. You guys cannot go anywhere. Don't miss it because this is going to be entertainment at its finest, man. If there's any people on the planet that can break this bad boy down, it is the analyst desk led by a brand new beautiful face. The one of the only. What's up, baby? Taylor. Love Reflections you, baby. Noble, baby. Love this. Hey, no John Fallout Kefa Lucas in here, baby. All right, you got Taylor Reflections, Noble. I'm back, and I'm back with the vengeance with the with the Jose Mavo. See what happens when you have that bad of a take in one time? day, Nick. Uh. Huh? Say, say that again, Nick. Did you do you see what happens when you have that bad of a hot take? Do you see what happens? Do you see? What <laughs> <laughs> How do you get him out of here? Yeah, get him uh, out he, of here. He gets booted, right? You can't. You can't. No. Booted and see the optic lives on like through that. John not being here. Colin Jacob, you killed it. I am losing my freaking mind, bro. Are you kidding me? Rise for the first time in their history in Gears in Grand Finals. I mean, for three of these guys, aside from Rushies, they're going for their first major championship. Same thing could be said for E United as well, right? Because Powers has it, but the others don't, besides the caveat, of course, uh, with... Um, Ends him on the other side. He did win MSP, but friend, I know you've got some takes on that, and so do I. But regardless, though, what a series that was. Let's start breaking it down. Friend, we'll start with you. Rise, they get it done. 
Yeah, man. I mean, they they were scaring me for a little bit there, um, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I mean, you know, I got I felt like that first map, this ritual map. I mean, they kind of scared me because I, I always feel like Rise has trouble uh, catching back up. But you know, Affinity said it um, earlier today. I mean, they've been starting off a little bit slow sometimes, and then they reverse sweep. Uh, they kind of did that this time. You know, they went down one uh, zero, then they they took control of the map and they took it to tiebreaker, which is the most important part, and came out on top. Um, you see, like, the thing about this, like, matchup, like, it, it's always going to be close. You know, it's mm. hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to beat a champion. I, I mean, I know. I know better <laughs> than <you> anyone. <laughs> yeah, no, I know better than anyone. Beating beating a champion, like, regardless if they lost or not, it doesn't matter. Like, it's really, really hard. So kudos to Rise to be able to close a close match out. I honestly didn't think they would get it done once they got to Clock Tower. I was scared for them. I was hoping they'd get it done before then. Um, but they proved me wrong. They proved me wrong. And and the biggest part about it, and I called this. I was talking to Ribs about this during the match. I called when they were up 5-4. I said, stop sending Rush to Nades. He needs to, they need to switch it up and play for Snipe because it, it, it looked like KCP figured out that if we stop them from getting Nades, we can pull this back. And so that's why KTP sent too low. So we, we saw sure. them switch it up for the last round. They got Snipe in their hands and that's all they needed. It's a great point, and, and me and Ashes were actually conversating during that entire map five. And Ashes, you were kind of saying the same thing about sending a player down low. It's it's a forcing, or it's a, it, at least it's opening up a door for KCP to push up top. But there was a critical moment that you kind of pointed out where Rise might have been able to formulate a game plan. Yeah, you know, as we were talking, we, we definitely saw that KCP every single time was pushing across up top. And I don't want to take away from the highlights, but that clock tower was definitely the key point for me. So KCP being aggressive up top on clock tower every single round over and over again, and it was working for them and Rise wasn't reacting. They weren't responding. They weren't differentiating their strategy. Like uh, Fran said, they kept sending Rush down low. And during that round where they had a cells in a 3v1, they had control of the map. I said to you, Reflections, I said, they need to just take this time, don't hunt down a cell, yeah. use this extra minute and talk about what you're going to do differently because this round's secured, right? As long as you don't, you know, stupidly rush into a cell, he's not going to clutch. Sit up there and talk about what you're going to do differently because KCP is doing the same thing over and over again. You've got to make a change. You've got to make something else happen. And we saw that. They did that. They started doing something different. They started changing up their strategies. They started throwing different looks. And the clock tower started swinging heavily in their favor to the point where they were able to close it out. But I think there was a little bit of momentum on their side going into that map, and KCP did do a great job of shutting that down, but it, what a matchup. What a matchup it was. And friend, from your perspective, after that fast scar, 5-4, so close. There was a chance, or at least Ashes and, and myself were thinking, man, this might be it for Rice. You know, they, they lost a close round number nine on Vascar, something that could have put them up two to one. Now they have District coming up. Uh, you know, Control was already close on Ritual. What were your thoughts as Rise was heading into map four on District? Were you a bit worried? Um, of course. I mean, I've been in those comms with, when, you know, with those players. They're my ex-teammates. And, you know, I, I will say this. I am very proud of the way they bounced back out of, out of, after a tough loss on Vazgar. I mean, that's not easy to lose like that. And then to go to, to, um, to District um, and face elimination like that after losing a tough map, I'm really proud of them bringing it back, bringing it to the Clock Tower and winning the way they did. And that takes composure. That, that's championship composure. And, uh, and that's why they're in the, the, the grand finals, you know? That's why they're there. They're great, amazing players. They're just trying to put it all together. And, th and this is the time. This is the moment to do it. Um, MVPs are made on Sunday. They're really made in winner's finals, and they're really made in uh, grand finals. So we'll see who, uh, who can come out on top pre uh, here pretty soon. And Ashes, Kansas City Pioneers, man. It's it's if you're if you're a fan of them or if anybody's a fan of KCP, it's heartbreaking to see them lose. How much of an impact do you think losing in winners finals had on this series against Rise? Well, I will say I was expecting them to be a little bit uh, more morally defeated as they went into this match. I expected that in their body language. Maybe the confidence was going to be a little bit less than what we had seen in previous series. But realistically, I mean, they came out swinging against Rise. They looked still like KCP, maybe a one step down, but it was a small step down. I think really right. all of the credit goes to that Rise roster. And I mean, Rise has proven me wrong. I started this off saying that they're a Friday team. And look, here That's they right. are on Sunday going to the grand finals. But 
for me, what I'm really wanting to know, and, and, and Fran, you mentioned you were uh, teammates with them a while ago. I would love to hear your thoughts on what are players like Avexis, like Rushy's thinking going into a grand finals from this position? I mean, they know it's an uphill battle right now. They already played United, but at the same time, they have a lot of confidence. I mean, I I spoke to Detox yesterday before his interview. I spoke to Chris before his interview today. I mean, they they know they've gone back and forth. I mean, E-Day's all split long have gone one way or the other. If I'm not mistaken, they are 3-3. and E-United is 3-3 and in in overall record against each other. Uh, This split, Rise and E-United, and... Who's going to break that tie? This is the moment to break that tie. You know, what What more can you ask for? Breaking the tie for for a trophy, for, for a major uh, championship. So I, I can't wait to see uh, how, you know, my guys over at Rise, you know, step up. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to be corny, but I'm going to say Rise to the occasion this one time, this <laughs> one time for the weekend, right? Uh, just because, you know, like I've been around it for so long. And, um, and like I said, these are they look different. They look different uh, just from that matchup just now. They look a little bit different. They, they look like they have a little swagger about them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope they can carry it into this grand finals. Well, just to make it a bit more personal for you, Fran, I, you know, I've seen your reaction in past majors where right after you retired, of course, watching your reaction when Rise is playing and seeing you at times get heartbroken when they've lost or seeing you at times, you know, just get frustrated when they're not playing up to potential. What does it mean to you finally to see Rise in grand finals after so much heartbreak and so many close matches? I mean, like I said, man, I mean, we I fought tooth and nail with these guys, you know, for so long. Um, I retired, you know, by their side. I I just want to see that. I know I've always said that they've had the potential to win win a championship and they've always let me down in one way or another. (laughs) Um, But, you know, and I've let them down, you know, but at the end of the day, I I just want to see them, you know, excel. But I will say this. I also have some friends over on E-United. Right. And, and that Powers guy is, you know, yeah. he's a monster. You know, he's yeah, not going to yeah, oh, he's not gonna <laughs> let you just walk in his house and take his trophy, you know. And uh, he has right. a bunch of those. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. And Ash is obviously, you know, power is too, right? So what does it mean for your perspective to watch him competing once again? And obviously you're part of a different organization, respectfully, but you have, you know, been a part of that EU organization. You have watched them compete and, and do their things. You know, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like I'm an honorary member of United um, through, the, you know, through the having my children go over there. But, uh, your children. you know, yeah, exactly. My, my gears babies. But, you know, uh, I think that powers is just, a phenomenal player, right? We all know that. And I think he has that championship mentality. And and even in that interview he was talking about earlier, I was super impressed. That was a much more locked in and focused Vic than I've seen in all the time I was working with him. He's always been that laid back goat. Like, I know I'm good and I'm going to continue to be good. Just play around me. I got this, guys. That's his mentality. But he was locked in. He said they put in more time and more effort than they ever have. That's, right. That's a scary E United. Knowing what right. he could do I, I guess half assing it, but now he's full assing it. And, and like, that's a scary, <laughs> of the scary Vic potential, right? Good way to put it. So, right. you know, and then, like I said, TJ, I got to work with him for a little bit. This kid deserves much more love than he gets and much more recognition. You've got this putting all of Lad Am on his back. I mean, this right. is, this is a team that is coming with full force into these grand finals and rise is going to have another really big challenge ahead of them. Well, now it's time to put both of you on the spot. Grand Finals is coming up. Two great teams have made it here. The best two teams for the spring major. Fran, I'm going to start with you. Give me your prediction. And if you want, give me your final words, because it's been a great time having you on the desk throughout the weekend. Man. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to make it short because there's just a lot to say about both teams. Um, My pick's going to be. E United for this one, mm. and for for two reasons. I think Powers right now is playing on a different level, not just as an individual, but like Asha said, I mean he's being a leader, um, and I, and I feel like that's important in a, in a scenario like this. Um, and I hope you know his teammates are, are listening to him and are looking at him um, as someone that should be leading as uh, leading by example. Now. Okay. I, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I have to take United. I mean, I just have to. I'm sorry, my rise guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I, 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 have to, <laughs> I, I have to take them. I do think that it will be a close match, um, but I think it comes down to 
dyslexic. Can he can he be the guy for Latam to bring another trophy to Latam? And I think he can. He's been playing like it, and I think he's the difference in the series. All right, fair enough. And friend, is there anything you want to say as you wrap up the weekend? A great weekend from you, of course. Uh, I mean, thank you guys for the support. Um, it's been awesome being up here with Ashes, with uh, Ryan, with Jordan, with you, Taylor, and my, and my buddy John, who's been just absolutely sabotaging me all weekend. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he has. <laughs> as he does. <laughs> but, but it's all great. Uh, thanks, you guys, and uh, thank you for all the love. Well, friend, you're wonderful. And Ashes, you're wonderful. We didn't have a chance to cast that one time you were on uh, E-Days <laughs> or Pro League, I think, a while ago. But now we finally had a chance to be on the same desk and talk a little bit. Ashes, it's great to work with you. So same question to you. Who are you going for first and foremost? And what are your final words on the desk as uh, you wrap up a great weekend? Yeah, long overdue us being together, right? Um, yes. I'm going to have to go with United. I've been I've been preaching the United word to all of their followers for a long time. I think that United is the stronger team here. I think that you have a worked up powers. You have a ready and hungry uh, TJ. You have the la new Latam King in this. I mean, there, there's so much potential around this uni United roster, and they're finally showing it. They're finally showcasing it when it matters the most. I think Rise, I'm very impressed by Rise. I'm not counting them out. I think this is going to be a great match, but I got to give it to EU United. I got to give it for my boy Vic and TJ. I'm hoping that they bring it home, and I think they will. Um, and then wrapping it up, thank you guys so much for having me. This was my first time on the analyst desk. Thank you all so much for supporting Gears, for supporting this amazing broadcast team. Taylor, you've been killing it all weekend. To the casters, Colin and PR, uh, to Toby, who obviously we all know and love. Uh, Fallout. Um, I, I've been, I told Fallout I've been impressed with him this entire weekend. Just he's been hearing great. the voice of God while also being able to do everything he says and does <laughs> while on stream. Not easy. Fran, you've been great to work with. I know we've been rivals and adversaries, but you've been even more fun to work with than you were as a rival. So I I really appreciate these opportunities. Same to Ribs and Ryan. Thank you guys. This has been a blast. Love it. You guys are fantastic legends, in fact, in the gear scene. And you guys have done so many amazing things. Well, here it is. Grand finals. It's about to be underway. And I can't wait to get it started. E United and Rise will once again face off for the second time in the spring major, but for the several time, right? In terms of split three in general, this is going to be one you don't want to miss. Grand finals coming up after the break.